We're rolling, boys. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another episode of Bussin' with the Boys. Episode 233. We're just out here doing them, boys. We're just out here fucking hitting pods once a week right now. Listen, summer is here, and what better way to take advantage of all it has to offer than with the Chevy Silverado. Silverado Summer. Think of all the possibilities from off-road adventures to DIY projects and hardcore work. Silverado has the capability and technology to make this summer the best one ever. Mm. With nine different Silverado models to choose from and engines that range from the powerful Turbomax to the 6.2 liter V8 and the Duramax diesel. You can count on Chevy power to... Chevy power and performance to get anything done. Like many of you, we've been hitting the road a lot lately, and it seems like everywhere we go, there's an army of Silverados and Silverado owners. Shout out to all of you. Game, recognize game. Head over to Chevy.com to check... Head out... Head... Well, it... Head over to Chevy.com and check out Silverado and all the Chevy trucks. The official trucks of Bustin' with the Boys. Hey, if the Chevy Silverado was a haircut, it might Come be on. Taylor's. I'm telling you, I was about Come to say on, too, dog. He, a couple slip ups, but overall, like it felt like your reading was way. Yeah, but we also shot that ad last week, and essentially that ad was what we no, did. No, no, that's except the compliment, brother. Yeah, you're you right. Know, I think it's because you cut the mullet off. Mullet might have made you dumber. Maybe. You know what I think it is too. I got to give a bit quick shout out to Paw Patrol. Well, there's some five minute stories in there. I li- I read the five minute stories in like twelve minutes, but I've been reading to my daughters. Ooh. Guys out here flying a helicopter and a whole bunch of stuff. So. You know, Paw Patrol has got me working out here. <laughs> Paw Patrol has got my ass working. I'll tell you what, it looks, I mean, that was a great move. It was a great move. I like the mullet for a bit of time, but mm. I think it had ran its course. And I, I, you show me the before and after, and it is. Yeah, our weekend. night and day. The, the reaction of you watching those two videos was, it looked like your mind literally was blown. <laughs> and you were you Whoa! Hey, play it back. I was like, hey, it's just a haircut. Yeah, we were. Yeah. But I do appreciate it. You're, the boys, I mean, my birthday was essentially me hanging out with my kids. And then late in the afternoon, Will and his family came over. Then his family left. And then me and Will just got banged the fuck up. Yeah. And got into a weird, we hit some fucking Twilight Zone type shit. It was shit. amazing. It was, it was so amazing. We, at one point, I was like, oh, we got to go. We got to go, uh, you know, take care of the goats. So we're walking up the, goats the driveway. Out. And we're like having, we're, we're like talking, we're like, we're like in something, you know, you're playing the circle game. You're like figuring something out. We stop. And I was like, we got, to, we have to have a hug right here. Bro, <laughs> in the middle of the dark driveway, he goes, we got to have a hug right now. And I'm 11 like, 11 PM. And literally I'm thinking to myself, that's exactly what we got to do. That is a hundred percent what needs to happen right now. Big embrace hug. We will literally pull your scaps apart. And try to wrap as much as you can around the individual. Yeah. Fucking hands spread as far as par- far apart as possible to just let them know, hey, we're both safe right now. Yeah. Dog, it was a magical night. I was like, this is going to be one of those nights like we're like 70 and old and we're going to look back and this is going to like be in our memory. And I go, we got to have a hug right now. So I feel like that'll encapsulate the entire moment. And we're just breaking shit down, dude. It was cool. It was literally like, like just to put like, we were watching, funny enough, we were watching... 2015 Redskins versus uh, Tampa Bay. Because <laughs> Will, Will and I started talking about quarterback, and Will's like, hey, you know, quarterback, that whole, uh, you like that game, and he starts going into it. I'll let you explain the whole situation that got us on that, but like... Or is that what you were about to ask? How did it get there? Yeah. Yeah. So we start to get a little banged up. Banged up. And we were talking about, we were talking about Kirk and that game and something. Taylor's like, hey, Taylor brought back, because I was like, oh, we, Jay Reed came up with the equation, and then like McVay, and then uh, myself and uh, Taylor goes. Taylor goes. Man, it is. It truly is wild that y'all had all those cats and like all those coaches, the coaching staff. Because O'Connell was part of it at one point, and um, you guys didn't get it, like out of the first round of the playoffs. So I thought that's my moment. I'm like telling Taylor, I was like, you know who also got his moment in that Tampa Bay game? We were down 24-0. You know who that? You know who got his first shot? That was your boy. So he's like, do you want to watch that game? And I was like, you know, you start to get nervous. Like, damn, now we got to watch the game. And I was like, yeah, we can watch the game and throw it on. Now, there was a bit of a pause for a little bit. I kind of got on my phone because I could feel it. And then it, and like a minute later, we was like, yeah, throw it on, dude. <laughs> no, like, the, 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 look, you had to think about it for a there's second. There's a longer pause because then I start telling the story. I start elaborating yeah. on the entire oh, thing. Oh, dog, yes. Can and you talk? You want- talking, then we start talking some, some you know, some, some drama. Yeah. I Do you want to go into that? Because legit, I was listening to that story and I was like, dude. You got to fucking tell that story. 
Uh, I think time and place for it. Time and place. Yeah. I don't think now's the time because that was. obviously birthday. I, I end up getting you to where we're watching old 2015. You know, we're watching the boy out there spin a little bit, but yeah. also failing. I was like, uh, you know, when a play's happening, I was like, man, I really don't want this one to come on. Yeah. Because I was like, okay, we can watch it, but there's one play where I miss a, a tackle in the hole, uh, draw play, and I was like, dude, he, no, things. but he that called things because you didn't really say it. And then I was live for a second. And he goes, yo, I really think there's a draw play coming up, and it was literally the next play. I was like, I thought oh, that could it. be right there. I thought the funny one was when that dude was running. He kind of crossed. I forgot the about that one, bro. <laughs> I started running. I was like, hang on, now I'm out, I'm out there chasing his yeah, ass. I'm the only one who's going to be able to make this play. Yeah. And then once he spun me around, I was like, God damn, I forgot that part. <laughs> Fuck. Dude, it was nuts. But literally, while we're watching that game, literally, it's eight years ago, and on the ticker, it's like the th the main thing that kept coming up was Tennessee versus the Falcons. And I'm like, bro, we lost that fucking game. And I remember, like, th then they start showing highlights of Tennessee versus the Falcons. It was, like, just nuts. So Will and I are now in the spin zone of, like, it's crazy that we're sitting together. <laughs> Don't know this each other. We're starting to get to the peak of yeah, being banged yeah. up. We're, like, sitting together and we're watching both of us, kind of, watching Will play. And then you can see parts of, like, oh, I know I'm in a game at this exact moment. Yeah. And we're not thinking of each other. We don't know each other. And how our, like, timelines have... Parallel gone, and then slowly they like, just come together. We had no clue busting with the boys was going to come about a few years later. Dog. And uh, JP, you know who the running back was that year for Washington? Matt, Matt Jones. Jones. Dude. Oh, yeah, Will brought started. up that you were doing shit for him. Yeah, yeah, I started telling Taylor. I was like, you know what's crazy too? Like, maybe since JP was just shooting Matt Jones, like he had a relationship with him. Like, maybe he's watching this game somewhere, like just rooting for Matt Jones. Like, JP's watching the game. You're, uh, I'm out here playing this game right here. You're Tennessee with that. You know, G and Jack are probably watching the Titans, like watching the Falcons game. Yeah. Cause you guys, they had came back. You were up for a while. Third quarter, they ended up taking the lead and you lost a close one. <sighs> And uh, we're just like, man, you had no clue. Like, the whole squad was going to come together, like, years later. And then then you start getting to where you're, like, leaned up. And you're like, bro, isn't this shit just wild? Dog, it was fucking nuts. And then, like— Rashad Matthews yeah. is with, for, on what team? The Dolphins? Yeah, he's in the Dolphins at that point. We're, like, seeing all these big names, but they're playing for other teams. It's like, man, all these guys are on different teams now. And it's like, man, they were really fucking doing it back then. And then somebody else popped up and— I don't know if it was it was Lockett maybe and Robert Woods and you're just like man these guys been these guys been doing Woods was on Buffalo Lockett was still yeah, obviously man, these on guys Seattle been doing and you're it like forever, damn bro like they've really been they've really been like that for a long yeah. time and then I'm like then we get back to when we're little and I was like man look at us but hold on not, not even that point yet because I was sitting in the chair Will was sitting on my couch and then <laughs> eventually we're both sitting on the couch like real fucking close and then we start talking about we. <laughs> <laughs> we start talking about something else like oh I showed him we uh Will like just leaned up basically and complimented my hair and I was like he's like it's crazy like and we start talking about glow ups and stuff like that and then we like I brought a Burt Kreischer something's oh, well, burning then, yeah you showed me the before and after and that's when yeah. in real time I'm your like your mind oh, is like oh. legit blown and I'm like yo is it really that and he's like dog it's crazy I was like, you had a glow up from losing your weight with the mullet and then you just had a glow up on top of a glow up <laughs> And I'm dead serious, Jay. Yeah, you guys know. Hey, you guys know. And now like, Will usually his mouth open. I'm mouth open. Like, oh fuck, that's crazy. I was like, look at this. I was like, even your jaw. I was like, dog, you had a glow. That's up all on I needed to hear. You know me, boys. Like, I'm always searching for that jaw. Glow up, and he's like, he's like, like man, we we start watching like something is burning. That is burning with, with Bert Kreischer. Because that was like five months ago, literally in February. And Terry's like, bro, even you look different. I was like, man, this shit is really wild. And we're like literally watching something from eight years ago. Will playing a football game eight years ago. It's still on the screen. And we're on my little ass phone watching like something from five months ago. We're like, yo, it's crazy that the football game that was eight years ago seems like it was like sooner than this thing that was five months ago. And yeah. look how different we both look. Because there's a couple of zoom, zoom ups on Will's face and you could see him smile a couple of times. And you're like, bro, like just everything was so different. Just so fucking different. And we were just like, it's just crazy. It was just a nuts experience. And then Taylor goes, yeah, it's like we could go back to any one of these moments like tomorrow and not miss a beat. And I was like, yes, bro. That's how I knew we were kind of on the same wavelength. And, I, and then I ended up, that's when we started to go back far. And I go, bro, isn't it nuts? I was like, we're sitting here. And I was like, we're in this empty house. Like, we might not ever get this moment again. And that guy, like, and I go, I and literally like, said. What are you talking about? First, first emotion that comes to mind is fear. It's like, what do you mean? I was like, yeah, I feel you. I said that. But I'm like, but also, this is one of those moments you have to appreciate. I was like, man, think about it. I'm like, we're having like an old school, high school, like an old throwback high school night 
where it's just us hanging out, watching like old stuff and we're kind of like reminiscing, but also being excited about the future and things like that. I was like, man, you only really do that with your boys. Like you think back on times back in middle school and high school when you're having those sleepovers, everybody's asleep, you're staying up late watching stuff. I was like, the wife's gone, my wife's back home, the kids are put down, it's just me and you. And I was like, and we never really had a, we weren't friends in high school. And I was like, we're getting to experience all this. Like we're, we're getting to like have a big, like build moment of like growth. And I was like, I was like, you know, you just have stuff imprinted on your mind. I was like, you go back to the rugs back when you play with the cars and you start like envisioning your life of what you want to be. You know the rugs like in elementary school that had like the towns on it. Yeah. And then it had like the letters all around it, like A through Z around the rug. And it's like, yo, we both played on that. Yeah. But we didn't know each other. Yeah, well, like we were doing it. I go, I go, dog, like, I don't know how it came up, but the Brave Little Toaster came to mind. Yes, I'm so glad you brought that up. And I was like, dog, Brave Little Toaster, Taylor's like searching. He's like, should we watch it? I was like, yeah, throw it on. Like the first, like, let's watch the first five minutes of this thing. And Loki, when we put it on, we're like, is this the movie? Yeah. I don't know. Because at first, we got to have, he goes, I have a memory of like, kind of, it seemed like a little like dark and ominous. And I was like, dog, me too. Yes. I was like, that was truly Brave Little Toaster was probably the first movie I watched like amongst a group like at daycare school like your first movie you kind of watch around people you don't really know so you're kind of watching the movie and remembering how it kind of gives you that dark ominous feeling it was dude we, we popped it on when legit we're just like it's crazy that, <laughs> that oh, at one point Will and I are probably sitting there watching this movie at the same time not knowing each other completely across the country and now we're fucking here. Because I said, the way you looked on something is burning the mustache and how you were thicker and stuff. I go, you remind me of some character off like, uh, you ever seen the Brave Little the uh, Brave Little Toaster? Yes. And we were like, yo, we got to put that on. And then Loki in the background, the movie's just playing. We go get the goats. That big hug happened. And then we went into a, like a, a wormhole of like how wild it is, how present we are in this moment. Yeah. And it's like That's very rarely... Like at one point we're like, we're not even thinking about how late it is, how we got to get up in the morning. We got kids. Like we're just like here in this moment. And it was like, it was like everything that was said, even the fear thing. When Will was like, we might never be here again. And I was like, yo, my first emotion of that is fear. And he's like, yeah, but. And I was like, the minute you said, but I felt way better. And he just fucking, <laughs> and he just worked it out for me. Oh, Dog. It was so funny. Cause I literally, at one point I was like, I gotta go check on uh, Wynn, my oldest daughter. Cause she, she was having a little sleepover cause mom was gone. And so I go in the room this little motherfucker, dude, waited for me to leave and grabbed her own her, the iPad and she's watching Smurfs on it. And I'm like, it's 1030 at night. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? And she like, looks at me with a shit eating grin like, I got your ass. And I'm like, I'm banged up. And I'm like, yo, you really got me. And then we talked for a minute and it was like, the whole time I'm thinking, if I, if I stay here too long, I'm going to lose the moment over there. And then I like finally get her situated. She goes he to bed. She text like, hey, when? He's like, I'm going to be back. I'm going to come back soon. <laughs> yeah. So I like open my door, you know, like my little pivot door to my master. I open it up and I close the door and no joke. I was like, I don't even remember going back to the man cave. I was like, just back in the man cave. Like, I was just like, yo, I'm, we're here now. He was like, my bad. And I said, I said, no, that helped me out because I now I feel like I'm able to articulate some of this a little bit more. <laughs> no, you was nuts. Say, I go, honestly, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Like, I feel something, but I just don't, I, I don't think I can put it into words. Yeah. Whoa. And then we, we legit got there. I forget what the conclusion was now. I forget too. But we fucking got there, dude. And we're like, yo, this is one of those moments where like, uh, we get to sit here and like, rem like we'll remember this. You like, hey, you remember it. that time at the house, like just hanging out? Because life happens. It's like literally, a, it's a core moment. It's a core, it's like a core, like the fucking movie. Inside out. Inside out, dude. It, no, we have one of those little blue balls. Or little, yeah, that's a yellow ball. It's definitely a yellow ball. And that motherfucker, it goes in the little sphere that allows us to be like, we can pull that shit whenever we want. Now, that thing's here. It's not, a, it's not a fleeting thought anymore. That thing is mm. there for fucking ever. And then we start talking about some cool shit about like uh, the whole Johnny Knoxville thing. Yeah. Yeah. Some good perspective stuff. Yeah. And we ended up in the kitchen eating all the uh, Cold Stone ice cream cake yeah. that I Which brought Which Will up. fucked me over with my kids, dude. It's literally like seven o'clock. Like my kids, are, they need to go down soon. They're hyped up and will. I'm like, all right, guys, we gotta go to bed in five minutes. And this we, is before. We just before. got done eating. A lot's been going on. Like, uh, uh, Dylan and Ruse come over to get like Seuss because Taylor obviously he's lost weight, so he's like, you guys can like, uh, y'all can have these. Yeah, y'all can take your pick of the suit. So dinner and everything was getting pushed back. Your boy, I get some ribeyes going. Uh, you know, make some uh, some potatoes. Like, 
making dinner and all that. So then it finally, fire, by the way. Then it, it ultimately, it's like, it's me, Charo, Rue, Wynn, Willow, Taylor. And it is like past Taylor's like wanting to go down at like 645. It's probably like 715 at this point. And I'm thinking like, I still got that ice cream cake. We haven't sang Taylor happy birthday and stuff like that. And I know Taylor's wanting to put him down, but I just think to myself and just make the decision myself. I'm like, Man, we've got to sing happy birthday to Taylor. Like, yeah, nobody, all, we haven't sang happy birthday to him. That's not exactly what you said to me. But, yeah, I, I, yeah, like, I know Taylor's going to be pissed I do this because he wants them to go down. And also, like, I'm bringing out ice cream cake right before they're going down. So, not only is he going to be pissed, like, I know he's going to say, like, hey, we'll eat this tomorrow. But then it's going to create a, you know, a shitstorm a little bit. But also, this is where, like, that cool, fun uncle, like, a move that you just do to your boy, like, I'm going to do this to him. Yeah. So, I go, I look in the fridge, I open it up, I go... But guys, we have ice cream cake. And, and then I was like, start, without happy, before can we act, start singing. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. I'm like, we all start God, singing. Yes, dude. I was like, let's eat this, guys. And Taylor's like, no, we got to go to bed. Next thing you know, Willow's just fucking like. Losing her fucking mind. Why can't I? Blah, blah, blah. And Taylor's like, Taylor's just like holding her, looking at me. He's like. <laughs> Backing up. Yeah. Like this, you and I have to deal with this. Because <laughs> yeah. my three-year-old, like when you can negotiate with her. My three-year-old, like negotiating with her is like, she's so strong-willed. When I tell her, I literally tell her, face, like, you're going to, this is going to make you so successful someday, getting yeah. what you want. I'm so proud that this is here. Right now, it's a fucking issue. Like, we got a problem. I had to deal, and then she was overtired the next day because she was up fighting about that fucking cake and I'm overtired because we're up till whatever and I got to negotiate with the child the whole day, which will bring me to my pet peeve later in this show. <laughs> so yeah, Will really fucked me over on all that, all that shit, dude. But what a fucking night it turned out to be. Yeah, my it was birthday, a great night. It was a great night. It wasn't a whole lot going on. I basically had two of my buddies come over and ransack my whole entire closet. They're fired up, and I'm excited to see them and some of the fits that I wore. It's going to be funny as shit. We need to get like a side-by-side -side if I can find it. That Taylor Taylor's funny. birthday is uh, serving his teammates as suits, giving away his stuff to other people, and watching Will Compton highlights. Yeah. I'm a giver, dude. I'm a giver. <laughs> but I got a lot out of that as well. It was awesome. And it's so weird like because we were having this conversation on Thursday or even Friday. It was Friday when I was trying to yeah. figure out. And Will was like, hit me with like, hey, what are we doing for your birthday? And low key, my favorite part of a birthday is when somebody misses my birthday. So I can be like, yo, you forgot. Like, what's the deal? Like, I was on the phone with Nick Bennett and, I, and he, I, he calls me on Saturday, which is my birthday. And we're talking for like 20 minutes. I'm like, hey, before we go any further, it's my birthday today. All good. You forgot. And he had like, he started, hey, well, you know, I was waiting for the right time and all this shit. Uh, but I love it. And also, dude, the, like these last seven months of busting, like we've been celebrating. It feels like we've been celebrating every fucking day. So I go, I want to celebrate my birthday. I feels weird to celebrate that because I feel like I've been celebrating the whole year of 2023. Yeah, Taylor was giving me that speech and I'm just sitting there like with a very like, I don't believe you. Because uh, yeah, I was, I was like, Taylor, that I was he like, says that. I was like, I was like, Taylor, you're you're definitely the, the type you've already explained. Like you want it either doesn't happen and then you have it over their head that they don't do it. So I'm truly, I'm genuinely right, asking you, I, what are you trying to do? Because I know the like Taylor left on Saturday to go to Italy, and I was like, I know nothing's like planned. Like what are you feeling and trying to do? He's like, man, I kind of just want to chill. I was like, are you do you truly want to chill? And he's like, yeah, I mean, yeah. if you want to come over and swim, and then it was like, you know, get the cake. Get the steaks. Yeah, what do you What do you want? What, what's the birthday boy want? Well, I was like, what's my little birthday boy want? I see your, I was like, I got my haircut on Friday and Alan was like, a shout out to boy Alan and uh, culture cut, culture, right? Culture, culture cuts. Culture Nashville, I think it's called. Okay. And um, he was like, Taylor's coming tomorrow at 2.45. So then I'm texting Taylor. I was like, hey, I see the birthday boy's getting himself a little haircut. I was like, what's he want to eat? I was like, you want smash burgers? You want steaks? Mm. He's like, if it's my pick, steaks. I was like, well, done, bro. Bro, I went to get that haircut at 2.45. I brought both my kids. <laughs> it was funny as hell. Like, you could tell the people that didn't have kids. And, like, my oldest daughter literally found, like, the little, when you get, like, your hair shampooed at the place to get your hair cut. And she grabs that little handle and looks back at me. And I'm like, when? No. Spritz her sister right in the face. Oh. I'm like, yo, what are we doing? Thankfully, Alan, who owns Culture Nashville, he's got a, a one-and-a-half-year-old little boy. And he's like, dog, if this was two years ago, I'd probably be like, yo, what the fuck's going on? But he's like, because I have kids, I totally get it. <laughs> My daughter's like opening the fridge and like putting Willow in it and pretending she's a drink. She's like, mm, I'm thirsty. I want a drink. And she kind of like waddles over there and opens it up. And Willow has this shit eating grin on her face. Like, yo, this, hey, I'm a drink. And I'm just thinking, yeah. Like, we pet the cactus. The cactus is fake. I'm like, it'll poke you. And he's like, nah, it's all good. I'm like, all right, pet the fucking cactus, dude. But they were ripping around. I'm thinking to myself, we got to hurry this haircut up. <laughs> he ripped it up, though. It got done in 20 minutes. So, Culture Nashville, shout out, no free shout out to them. That being said, should we hit shout out, no free shout out? We ready? Yeah. You boys, who who in the back wants to do it? 
Go ahead, JP. Go ahead. My shout out, no free shout out goes to when you're traveling somewhere and you got to pull up the GPS and you see that yellow or maybe red traffic. And then you get to that spot. You're like, man, this is really about to suck. But Apple hasn't updated their maps yet. And there actually is no traffic. Mm. So you just cruise right through. It's one of the best feelings ever. The yeah. great feeling of relief. Dude, if you're on a road trip and it says hazard ahead, and then it literally it asks you like, hey, is the hazard clear? And you think, I'm not helping you out though. I'm not going to press that okay. Um, but you just wait for the thing to go out. You're like, I just showed you with my work that it's not there anymore. I take a different approach. You, you press okay? Yeah. What a guy. You're, <laughs> There's hey. still something there, right? Yeah, yeah. Something's still there. Yeah, yeah. I'll do that. Yeah. I'll do that too. Nah. But yeah, there's still... I feel like I'm actually doing a service to him. Yeah, you're helping out. Me, man. Especially like if there's a, a cop one coming up. The cop one or is... It's, or it's like a speed, uh, speed thing going on. And you're like, let me try and find out for everybody else. Right. Looking around. No, we're clear. We're clear. <laughs> hey, clear. Yeah, clear. Um, hey, that was a wild conversation, too. That was a wild conversation. Yeah. Uh, who else got the shout-out? No free shout-out. <laughs> I have one, and it goes along with iPhones. And correct me if I have someone has used this. I don't think they have. But I'm shouting out the greatest Apple feature that's ever been created, and it is when you get a verification code and you have to type it in on a different app and it suggests the code. So you don't have to copy and paste it. It's just immediately there. And just that little bit of convenience sometimes saves you from just going over the edge. So shout out to the best Apple feature. I don't know what it's called, but I think we all know what I'm talking about. Yeah, absolutely. So. That is a nice little deal. It is nice. I was sitting on my computer <laughs> this weekend. And I'm fucking going through all the my emails and the passwords and stuff like that. I'm like, I barely know my passwords. But when you would get the autofill, I go to log into like YouTube or Twitter or Instagram, any of that shit. And it goes autofill for this email address. And you just press it. It's kind of like the same thing. And you're like, thank so, God, bro. Because I was literally about to fuck up my day. Low key. That's what to turn into a pet peeve. Exactly. You know? I have a question. Do you guys ever use the suggested password that Apple gives you? No. Me neither. I get so scared. I'm like, there's no way I'll ever remember this unless I'm just on my phone. It, it, it's like, I always feel like I'm in some high, some high stress alert situation where I'm trying to like hack into something or somebody's going to kill you. And I'm like, I'm not going to be able to find this. So, you know, I choose my own. Hell yeah, dog. Hell I, yeah. That's always been a thought of mine. I'm like, man, do people use these? Cause these are fucking crazy. It's a bunch of shit. There's no way you'll, you'll have to put it on a sticky note. Low key, you should put it on your phone, but then it's like that defeats the purpose That's of the thing, though. I feel like it else. saves your phone, but if you happen to be again on a computer, like trying to get out of something, you're not going to remember it. I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. Mitchie, shout out, no free shout out. My shout out, no free shout out this, uh, this week. Again, correct, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if anybody's used it. Uh, it's just going for a drive, just driving around, just driving around town, especially in a new city. Not that I'm like new here anymore, but like still kind of exploring around different areas. Just putting your music on, putting your windows down, little just road therapy, just letting your thoughts be your thoughts and just kind of put your hand out the window, let your hand like ride and stuff. Just let the air take you. Yeah. And just kind of put on some music, just turn it up a little bit and just vibe for a little bit and just enjoy your time by yourself just driving around. Mm. That's a solid shout out. No free shout out. Garrett, do you have one this week? I do have one this Impressive. week. Yeah. Right. Uh, my shout out, no free shout out is going to go to. The people at PLL for having my brother and I in Louisville this weekend. Mm. Um, it's a pretty cool experience. Never really seen like that high level um, of competition like in person, especially being from Tennessee. So that was cool to experience. Um, but they were great. Good hosts. Got to watch it all on the field. Um, but yeah, it was a good time. Shout out them. When you were watching the PLL, did you think, I can get out there and do that no problem? It is funny because you do think, like, I mean, they're not that much bigger than us. Yeah. Um, but they're definitely, like, their skill is just, like... And handles, next, like, crazy. Like, handles are crazy. Mm. And for an all-star game, you know, they're always, like, fucking around. So some of the, like, skip passes and shit like that are just, like, no lookers. It's It was impressive. There's a, there's a skill competition, and the fastest shot was, like, 121 miles an hour. And that, seeing that, like, that close was, like, I would never play goalie. Did you ever scrape the three digits? No. No, no shot. No, I think I touched 90, like, once. What a feeling that was, I bet. Yeah. It was pretty cool. That's a shout-out for not knowing anything about the PLL. That's a solid 
Shout yeah, out it was good. Out. It was a good time. Good event. Willie. Uh oh. Go Miko. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. <clears throat> My shout out, no free shout out goes to. We're obviously on the conversation of nostalgia and stuff like that. My shout out, no free shout out goes to getting your own seat on the school bus in high school. If you can get your own seat, and I was one of the last. Every time I took the bus, I was one of the last cats to before like you get to the school the one of the last stops and you get on there and it's like usually, you know, a couple of the smelly kids or a couple, you know, the thicker kids were kind of by themselves hogging up all the chair and you would never really get that. But that opportunity you get, whether it's middle of the pack, back of the pack, front of the pack, whatever. And there's a, there's a, a seat all by itself. Like you just kind of, that's the limousine of a bus ride. It's a phenomenal thing. You kick your knee up, fucking look around a little bit, hang out, get a couple conversations. You got, you got more mobility to look around it's a solid fucking feeling. You hit the post up with the, uh, the, the back to the window. And you yeah, got 100%. You on everything. Yeah, you got one leg up and you kind of talk them. Hey, yo. And you just kind of, yeah. you can talk to anybody. You just feel cool when you have that posture going. Yeah. Like, yeah you feeling it. It's a great day. A couple day. guys ask you a question. You're like, yeah, you know. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, it's though? hand. Yeah, like, you know. And But low key, if you're sitting there like this. Having a conversation like it's a little, it's a little beta. It's beta. You're trying to like, yeah, oh yeah. Especially hopefully. somebody behind too who's like wants your attention. You kind of do the longer slow turn. Yeah. <laughs> Sit there a little half turn. What's up, man? Can't turn my neck like that. But yeah, that's my shout out. No free shout out. I got a couple questions because I'm nervous that they, these have been used before. Well, just do it. Have uh, has leftovers been shouted out? Absolutely. Um, I think it was you too. Where, really? I know. I'm not. I legitimately think it was you. About uh, sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> have leftovers have like when you don't have nothing to eat and you open that fridge and you got that. Oh shit! I forgot about this. Pretty sure. How about uh, movies on TV? Oh, like hotel movies. Yeah, he said that. What, what was the shout out, G? Mine was when like oh, the. No, the rules. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Mine was when you're flipping through channels and you catch a movie on TV at the beginning. You okay. know what I'm talking about? Okay. What do you got? I think My, you mine was going to be on the TV one because, again, I have another one that I had done over the weekend. Uh, but mine was going to be on the movie aspect. The movie front is like when you just, you plop down on the couch, you're just mindlessly watching TV. You don't really know what you want to watch, but that there's just a movie on or a show on that helps make that selection for you that you're kind of fired up about. You know, that's the next thing you're going to do for the next hour versus be on a show and you're flipping around and be like, oh, I'm not really, feel I'm not feeling this. But when you see that movie, you're like, man, I ain't seen this in a minute. Like, let's fucking watch this. There might only be 30 minutes left, but you're going to enjoy that next 30 minutes because the TV decided for you. I that's think that's what, a great that's one. Good, yeah. All right, but perfect. I have a question to follow that up. Go ahead. Have you watched Troy yet? No, that's tough. That's I know. I was I know. hoping that was going to be the movie. Uh, Brad Pitt's about. a yeah. rock in that movie too. That uh, that's low key. A shout out for another day, but I have not watched Troy, and that this does seem like a movie that needs to be kind of like like a core value in my life. Since we're on the uh, subject of movies, have has anybody seen Oppenheimer yet? No, oh. I keep seeing it being talked about. Is it like that? I see my guy from Peaky Blinders is in I it. I saw something that said this might be. The All best time. movie of the year by far, and it might be the be one of like the better movies so far of this century. Oppenheimer? Yes. Oh, you've seen it? No, Hold no, on. that's something Hold I on. saw. How did you see uh, it? Oppenheimer. It's Oppenheimer. Oh, it's Oppenheimer. 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 <laughs> but yeah, like I heard, it's like it's really like that. Yeah, but like Barbie is also uh, like if I say Oppenheimer, you're gonna be like, well, what is what does Oppenheimer even mean? If I say Barbie to you, everyone knows what Barbie. Is. Yeah. And Margot Robbie's in it. Ryan Gosling's in it. Yeah, I saw like, like a clip of. Barbie being like, I'll beat you off right here. Oh, we'll have a beach off. I'll beat you off with both hands. Like they were like puns like that. And I thought, eh, it's kind of funny. Toe in the line? Yeah, toe in the line a little bit. But like, I, I, I would see the movie. Because you're trying to, okay, I mean, you're yeah, basically sure like. would see the movie. But like Oppenheimer, you see, I don't even know what the fucking movie's about. But I look at it Nolan. and I'm like, <laughs> what's it about? The first atomic bomb. How the oh, making so I know of the it, ending right? of that. I know yeah. the ending the of the movie already. The detonation. Apparently, when the bomb goes off in the movie, it oh. is the last. I mean, that's not like a spoiler. Okay. That, that that's history. <laughs> oh. But but when it does, it's the loudest the the theatrical. Yeah. Yeah. Theatrical Theater? experience in history. Like it is the loudest moment in a movie that you can experience thus far. People are saying like, if you go see in the IMAX, which 
Nashville, one of 19 true IMAX theaters in the whole country. We are lucky enough to have it. Oh. So if you go see Oppenheimer, go to the Opry Mills 70 millimeter IMAX. It's probably insane. I see you just dropping. We gotta do a little field Jack. trip as the before like Willie goes to Italy and stuff. Well, the thing it's it's the double feature. People Friday. are people are Friday. trying to do Friday. the Barbenheimer, Friday. which they've been calling it, which is you see Barbie and Oppenheimer in the same day, and it's like six hours of cinema. So and on two different spectrums, but I've heard great things about both. Dog, a back to back movie is the fucking best. Back to back. I probably told this story before. My mom would randomly take me out of school sometimes in like elementary school or middle school. She'd be like, hey, we're having a mental health day. And we'd read Rip Over and we'd go into a theater, Finding Nemo or whatever it was, and there'd be like another showing to whatever movie. Mom'd be like, we can just sneak into that one, can't we? And she would like literally take me in there. What's up? Oh, we're going to be all right. We're always going to be all right. But double movie feature is fucking elite, brother. The Barbenheimer. Yeah, I'm sure we can go see it. You got money? You got money, bro. You can go see whatever you want. Craziest fact about the Oppenheimer movie, I used to be a camp counselor, and one of my kids in my cabin was like uh, their middle school age, and his great-granddad was the pilot of the plane that dropped the bomb. And I don't know how true this is. The kid was 11 years old at the time, but the family <laughs> like doesn't know. He definitely doesn't know much about him because he kind of like fell off after that. But apparently he didn't even know to the extent of like what he was doing. Yeah. I mean, so I was like, God, that's that dark. shit is nuts. You almost don't want the pilot to know a kind of decision like that. Cause then the, the, like the human element can get in like, man, should I be doing this? Well, apparently God in country friend. Yeah. The reason they really dropped it is as more of like a test. We had already come to a conclusion with Japan and they were, we we're supposed to drop it on Russia during like i can't remember and then that's like settled out and then they just dropped it on hiroshima and a main part is i forget the scientist who plays killian murphy in the movie or killian murphy plays him he like he was pushing so hard to drop it just because he spent like his whole life revolutionizing like the biggest war machine of all time They're like we have to use it and then it like basically right. obliterated an entire generation of people and cause a lot of bad things to our environment in Japan, but God damn. you need to see it. Apparently, it's it'll rattle you. Yo, history kind of fucks, dude. History does fuck. I mean, it depends History's on what side of history you're on. I'm sure if you were in Hiroshima in the mid, like early 40s, that's not a dope history lesson, but history is fucking wild. Yeah. Like, I'm watching Last Kingdom right now. And I'm sure it's all fiction, but... No, it's boys. Based on the boys that you were out there just riding events, horses dude. and shit and ripping around. Talk about the the All word of mouth too. The forming of England. Yeah, but I think it's just crazy. Like, it's like obviously sitting in 2023 and then looking at these people being like, "Yo, we got to tell this person something." And they're across the country. Ride. How many days? Five Six days. Yeah. It's like we got to get there, and then hopefully you get there before somebody else does. Like in the beginning of the show, Uchi does some badass shit. I'm not going to give anything up. And he's, they're like, hey, you got to go tell the king that you did this. Otherwise, somebody else is going to take credit for it. And he's like, no, because he's Utrecht. And he's like, I don't need that. And he fucking goes and does it. He doesn't do it. Somebody else takes the credit and puts him in a fucking bind. Yeah. Stories, dude. Story is all. Yeah. Oh, is destiny. it glory? It's destiny is all. Destiny is all. And, yo, shout out to the guy who plays Utrecht, too, because he becomes a much better actor the farther down the line. Mitch, that just pissed me off, dude. <laughs> yo, what? What? <laughs> Just messing up fucking Utrid's sign off. I said, I fucked it up too. Glory is all. That's a story. I know, but yeah. Um, should we do the twisted question? We're twisted right now. Yeah. Twisted Kings. We are the Twisted Kings, and this is the twisted question, dude. By Boston Beer Company. I'll take it. Will all right? Twisted tea is a refreshing hard iced tea made with real brewed tea and five percent alcohol. It tastes like real iced tea because it's made. With real brewed tea. Real brewed tea with a kick. 5% ABV. Full flavor and refreshing. Goes down smooth. There's no carbonation, which makes it easy to drink all day long. Twisted tea. Twisted tea feels fun and celebrates extreme fandom on game day. Twisted tea is the perfect alcohol beverage for game day, whether tailgating in the parking lot, watching at the bar, watching with friends at home. Twisted tea is there to turn up your game day, dude. Keep it twisted. And that is from one of two Twisted Teas. Grab... Twisted Kings, grab a refreshing Twisted Tea today. 
Our question today is going to come from Jack McPherson. Jack, what's our question? No, from JP. It's going to come from JP Hovey. JP, what's our question? The question is also brought to you by my friend John Pettit that asked me this this weekend. Okay. But the question is, would you rather have the superpower to run every red light or you have the front row parking spot in any crowded parking lot wherever you go to? You drive in that parking lot, somebody pulls out. It's a given every time. Assuming zero... No accidents with the red light. At the red light Assuming stuff. you're not drinking and driving either. Yes. Just, right. Just, you have to drink responsibly. Yeah. 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 Smart, Jack. That's, that's next level thinking. Do you want to go first? Or you want me to go first? Go ahead. I think the answer is very simple here. You talk about how many times you get into a, a crowded parking lot and you're sitting there and you're wondering, man, what the fuck's going on? I don't mind a couple extra steps during the day. I don't track them, but I, do, I don't mind it. So if I need to go find a little place in the back, it is what it is. For me, if you're able to run every red light possible and never get hit, never have the worry of like, I'm going to fuck some shit up. Maybe somebody else gets in a car accident or something like that. The amount of time you're going to save is you're taking off so many minutes a day, so many hours a week, possibly years if we're really coming down to it. And that is time that you can never get back. That is my answer. It's going to be the red light. Mm. I disagree. <laughs> Mine is going to be parking spots. Piece of shit. I, you know, especially if you're at an arena, you're, you're at a big event, anything like that, a game, whatever the case may be, you get that front row parking spot at absolutely everything. Everywhere you go, I'm taking that. Every now and then I don't mind those extra shifts, but if I just get to mitigate that and get the freaking front row parking spot, I'm taking that. I feel like with the red light, I don't mind stopping every now and then. I think, uh, I think we've lost sight of what patience looks like. And I think when you stop, because we want to ever, we always want to get to where we're going fast. We always want to, you know, be first, like not take the time to smell the roses a little bit. I don't mind a nice little stop at the red light every now and then. So I'm going to go with parking spot. I think if you're looking at efficiency in life, you want to have patience, brother. Go sit on the couch and enjoy yourself for a second. You're going to get there a whole lot faster with the red light. You, talk, you brought up big arenas. You talked about big events. Not a whole lot like... Brother, you put yourself in a position where most of the big events you go to, you're getting that, you know, through the hallway entrance, back door, under tunnels type shit where you're getting there real fast. There's probably a little security with you sometimes. I'm thinking about Vegas, 290, Shane Gillis. They took us in that little kitchen over there ripping us around, right? If we were driving to that, well, you're in and out pretty fast. With a red light, I'm talking about more time with the family. I'm talking about more time with the boys. More time doing what you love most. And that's not sitting behind a wheel, dude. None of us are 14 gears on a semi-truck ripping around the country thinking we fucking love this. You just get to go, get where you're going. Patience. I got more patience with the kid because I didn't hit a fucking red light. Then I don't have to go fucking, I can feel a little bit better about my negotiations with a three-year-old terrorist when it comes to ice cream cake. I feel I'm, I'm uh, in a better headspace now. The red light is the obvious choice here. I, I see where you're coming from a little bit, but I think it's, I think you're, you're, you're kind of zoomed in a little bit, too much tunnel vision on the, the big overlaying things. Yeah, we're going to NASCAR. You're going to certain things. It's a, it's a bit of an issue, but you're going to get there a whole lot faster. Beat the traffic. You might get in that parking spot anyway. You might be a cake eater with that red light piece. Restaurants, grocery shopping. Money, easy. All of it. I would love to pull up front and center. Um, as far as the car ride, getting to places faster. I don't mind a little extra conversation in the, in the vehicle if you have people there. I don't mind you know, getting on a phone call and you're catching up with somebody, catching up with your old man, people that you haven't seen in a long time. You get that little extra time on the road a little bit. I think I appreciate that a lot. And then if you're going home to negotiate with a three-year-old terrorist, you have a little bit more time to prepare, get your wherewithal about you, figure out, hey, what's happening at the house right now? What do I need to be ready to come into? That's where you fucked up, brother. You don't have time to prepare for with a three-year-old terrorist. Those things come up. I'm not thinking to myself, oh, my best friend's going to bring up ice cream cake three minutes before bedtime. I got to prepare for this situation. Those are things with three-year-olds. There's, you're just in there and they're going to be strong headed and, and getting after you. It comes up on you like that. You got to be ready at all times. To which I think I would enjoy my, my solitude a little bit more on the ride home, get a little bit more me time right. before I have to go home. When you go home, just have a little more me time. Parking spot. <laughs> Boys in the back. How do we, how do we feel about it? Oh yeah. Where are you guys at? We gonna take a vote who we stand with? Yeah. Who do you stand with? Or maybe there's a wrinkle that hasn't been said. Yeah. I, well, I stand with Will because your exact uh, 
explanation about the patience is exactly what I told my friend Pettit when he asked me about it. <laughs> so I, I'm with that. And I'm just going to those events way more. Like you're talking about how much time would the red light save of your day? Like how, how often are you driving per day? Lots. And, how often are you going to a concert or a sporting event? Guess what? You got that front row. You got that that spot. No. I'm saying like you're the red lights. You have saved like five minutes. A, a, a light lasts forty five seconds. A drive. So from me to here and back, that's five minutes both ways. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> oh, you know the traffic over here with this little light. And people yeah. not pulling up to turn left. And it's two minutes. But listen, you have to get to the red light to run it. You don't get to miss right. all the traffic. This isn't a traffic oh, no, I'm question. bobbing and weaving on them now. I know no matter what, I can get past this red light. I might pull over. I might go London on them bitches and go all the way to the left and then cruise back over to the right because it ain't nothing going to happen. You guys already put that insurance policy in for me. It's too short-sighted talking about arenas and big events and stuff like that every the, single day. The more you explain, the better I feel about mine. Mm. I, hey, I love that, JP, because that's a cop-out. I love that, dude. I'm good where what I'm a at. good way to get out of it. I'm Jack? good where I'm at. I'm with you, Taylor. Let's there, fucking go, Jack! You are in a car driving, going through red lights so much more in your life than you are going to events. And, and I get the grocery store thing. I'm but, talking everywhere. I don't yeah, care if it's every, a small week, parking lot. The only time it feels like parking would come into play is at like going to a Titans game or something at an arena where there's a mass amount of parking. Mm -hmm. When you're at the grocery store, very rarely, if ever, have I gone there and not been able to get a parking spot, nor have I ever thought like, wow, this walk is going to really set me back some time. So the world I, of trying to make the extra text or call like, hey, where do I park here? I'm here. No matter where you're at, no matter where you're at, not it's not it's not a question. You got I'm that not, front row I spot. Too broad of a statement, dude. You no, no no matter where you're at, do you call people when you go to Trader Joe's that like you do once a week, every single week, and you know, no, Trader Joe's is a bitch ass parking lot too. Like they need to fucking figure their shit out there. But you're not calling, being like, "Yo, where do I go?" Like we're truly just talking about events. No, it could every be every single you day. Could be downtown. You could be five in the park this way. Five minutes that way. If I do just one trip there and back, that's ten minutes according to JP. Ten minutes. No, your whole day is what I'm saying, uh, not one I, trip. I, then you don't you don't drive as much as me, and that's okay. <laughs> When's that's the, all right. Never mind. I won't even go. Go ahead. <laughs> When's the last time you went to the grocery store? <laughs> four days ago. <laughs> I was in there four days ago. Hey, yeah, man, don't my do dad asked me that same question last night, and it pissed me off. I was like, dude, I go to the grocery store. You don't go to the grocery yes, store. Yes, I do. <laughs> no, you get over there. Yeah, I get over there. Shut I get over there. I get over there. I get over there. I go to that Whole Foods hey, in next, Green Hills. Next time you go to the grocery store, we need a selfie posted. Done. All right. Expect one today after we're done with this fucking pod. <laughs> Me in there. And also, dude, a little hack, a little hack for the grocery store because I'm there so much. Get you, especially if you're at Whole Foods, let's say it's in the morning time, like is when I like to go because the traffic is a little less. Get yourself a, you say valet. <laughs> get the fuck out here with that. Dude, you go to the grocery store, go, right to the beverage aisle because they have the little singlet boys out there. What's it? Cola brew or a water or something like that. Get that thing, crack it open. And it's on the other side of the entrance. I'll, I'll ignore the produce and go all the way because I know the grocery store so much. I go through the produce area all the way past the cashiers, past the coffee shop, and I'll go grab myself a cold brew and I'll crack that thing and I'll do my chores, my choring in the grocery store and with a drink. And that's a little, that's a little free out. piece of advice for you. You're still going to pay for it, but get you a little beverage to enjoy yourself a little bit more because the grocery store ain't that much fun. It's not that much fun because I go all the time. <laughs> I know that. I know how not fun it is. Jerry, where you at, dude? Where are you at, man? I think it's tough, but I think I got to go with the parking spot. You talk about all the places that you're going and running the lights. When you're going somewhere, you got to park your car. So why not park it in the first spot, closest spot to the door? So I, I, I hear both sides, but you could also just leave a little bit earlier and not be in a rush to have to run lights. So parking spot. That's so gay. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mitch. <laughs> Is that gla just gladiator? That's so fucking lame, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm not entirely sure what side I sit on. You better pick a side, brother. You're the deciding vote. <laughs> you you the gotta side. pick one. No, I, Wait a minute. We'll, we'll literally, we'll, let's, we'll no, go I mean, do something and we'll come back to you if I, you want. I do it. Like it's because I I'm one where I don't mind sitting at lights, but I also don't mind Shout walking out farther. A good drive with some music. Yeah, I mean, like, I think I Maybe think you're on a good podcast, a good conversation. So stupid, dude. 
I think I'm gonna go with Will. Like I'm, I don't mind waiting at lights. Like it is what it is. Like I don't, I just really don't care. Like I forgot how dumb this whole entire bus is. Besides Jack, I'm man. just this never. Crazy. <laughs> like I, that's wild. The thinking by you guys. I mean, like no disrespect. It's just, it's just, <laughs> <laughs> no offense, but it just lets you listen to your song longer, your podcast longer. Yeah. If you're on the phone with your your parents or somebody, just just to catch up. I'm like. Such a hurry, man. Yeah, y'all for are, real. Y'all are super patient guys today. Today, I, dude. I want to see y'all when you're not well, so patient. Well, the two people that are battling for running lights are the most impatient people. Uh, I'm super patient, so dude. That's I'm so patient. <laughs> what do you mean? When, when have you seen me not patient? When have you seen me... I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> when do you see me fucking get all like, oh, fuck, because of anything? When's the last time you see me mad? Running a light? <laughs> yeah, because this shit's got to go a little faster, huh? <laughs> With the light thing, here we go. Yeah. You know? I, mean, hey. I don't know. I'll just, I'll go to JP and Will. When the whole flight thing happened at JFK, you see me flinch? When we were sitting there at the baggage claim and they're like, you're going to miss this direct flight? Did you guys see me flinch? I was like, hey, it is what it is. You guys got to go. Better you guys not missing, like all three of us not missing this flight or missing the flight. I'll just miss it. You guys go. Did you see me flinch? You see me fucking pouting and mad? What are you talking about? I said I pouted right out. It took 20 minutes. I took 20 minutes. I put the headphones in. I put some angry music on. And when that timer went off, that bring, bring, I went and got myself a breakfast bowl. I hung what, out. I got myself a coffee. With where's, the, where's the conversation went to now? I'm talking about patience, which is everybody's ridiculous I, I, claim. We, we've all we've all been in a car with you. Because you can literally you see the patience thing. Strap you in. See the patience thing for the parking. Like, oh, oh, there's nowhere to park. Oh, where am I gonna go? I have to go three rows back. Are we talking about getting mad or getting flustered? No, I'm talking about patience. I'm obviously flustered right now because I feel like my boys have been misled. Like, no, I gotta call all, I gotta call it's all a, y'all's it's parents. Personal. It's a, it's your own. I gotta call everybody who's been a mentor to you guys. I gotta fucking get a hold of them and tell them you guys messed up a little bit. I look. I know. I like in life, you're a patient person. Like, I, I haven't seen you explode like crazy or anything. But this is different. Driving, you are. It is chaos when you're driving. I and I think to Garrett's point, you, you and Jack have similar personalities. So, like, y'all two are more similar, so y'all would have that same belief. And it's, there's nothing wrong with either one. You're all the square, dude. And look, it could be, it could be four to two right now. It could be 80 to 20 uh, when the vote goes up, the poll goes up on, on Twitter. Parking to, it could be, yeah. No, it could go eight. If history, yeah, yeah, if history yeah. is anything, I'm going to catch the back end and I'm going to take the short end of the stick on the poll. I'm usually not the victor in the poll area. I was the Why minority. Why don't you think that is? You think it's a personal thing, or you think at some point you're gonna like be like, maybe I just I'm on the wrong side of history. <laughs> wrong side of history. This is where we're making up history right now. Maybe you're viewing the results too early on, not being patient enough and waiting till the end to see. Like the, I see what you did there, <laughs> dude. Let me tell you, dude. In life, there's two. <laughs> two is always better. A double play is always more exciting than a single play. An encore is always better than a band leaving early. And sport clips haircut can. Now get twice the relaxation during the Ultimate MVP Relax and Repeat event. For a limited time, the Ultimate MVP haircut experience costs the same as the MVP. That means that for a month, the month of July, it's July 25th, 24th. So for six more days, you get double the massage, the massaging hair time and Sunday satisfaction and double the hot steam towel or cool it down and try it with a chill towel, a refreshing Heat beating alternative available all month long. The ultimate relaxation and repeat event is everything you love about the MVP, just more of it. So double your relaxation, all the all the price of having it once. Sport clips. It's a game changer. At participation locations, offer ends July 31st, 2023. <sighs> I'm glad we got that, that ad to get out of there. Because you guys kind of get a front row parking spot. You pay four V one and a half. Because Jack did you did. Get a little quiet on me, brother. Wait, what? What's that? A little quiet on me. Here we go. I'm over here wielding my sword. That's crazy. That is no, 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 crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. Roll the tape oh, back. Just roll that tape back a little bit. I'm this close. Leave him on an island. Jack was with you the whole time. The whole time. It's okay. It's okay. We're, it's all right. Y'all want to move on to tear talk? Maybe that was me. Maybe that was me, brother. All right. <laughs> I am a little flustered right now. I'm getting impatient with the situation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> laugh like, I'm laughing like, with you. I'm I think it's around. being funny. I'm fucking around. We can. Doesn't matter. I know the. What are we doing for tear talk? The uniforms? alternative uniforms for the NFL. Oh, but yeah. 
What'd you got? So we got some fries. This is the tear talk. Oh! Nate, oh. Nate. Hold on, get in here, dog. How are you? You can't yell me on the podcast. I need my job. <laughs> it's too late. Man. Too late. Oh, gosh, dude. We're live. Yo. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you need to. You need to have these as the, the every day, every week. Oh, we are. We, we got two games coming up. We're gonna announce that in a couple days. You guys, any guesses of what what games it'll be? Houston and Houston. <laughs> oh, should be Houston. Houston dog. Yeah. It's gonna be uh, Houston. One. Houston. And I think the Steelers Thursday night game. When does this come out? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Houston's one of them yep. at home. Gotta, gotta flex on Houston. Hey, these shout boys, out man. Bane, dude. Hey, Bane. Let's fucking go. Legend. Shout out the boy Bane, man. Yo, that is hype. Summer, hey, summer Fridays are things of the past. It's time for Friday Rye Day with Whistle Pig Whiskey. Whistle Pig piggyback 100% rye, age six years, made with 100% rye. Bold spice forward, perfect for maple old fashions. Whistle Pig piggyback 100 proof bourbon, age six years, 100 proof. Shines in sour and citrus. Show cocktails. them the bottle. Show them the bottle. Show them the bottle. Other one. This one is the. This one is the rye. Oh yeah, of course. Show that boy. Show that busting with the boys sticker Eww. bourbon. Shines in sour and citrus cocktails. Piggyback rye's better half. Whistle pig ten year. Also a banger. The one that started Whistle Pig, the original disruptor, age 10 years, 100 proof. Grab yourself a bottle or three bottles, one of each, the rye, the bust with the boys bourbon, and a 10 year of Whistle Pig whiskey. And kiss your workday goodbye this summer rye day. No, these are tight. Now, I, I do want to say this. Shout out Nate Bain. <laughs> but I did tell Joey, like a couple days before I got cut, I need one of those jerseys in 77 Lawan. Game day edition. Cut the same way and everything. He did promise. This is a nice gift. This does not get you out of that, Joey. I'm going to need that. These are the best uniforms. I yeah, think... I, I the tier talk. Say what the tier talk is. Well, tier talk is best uh, alternate uniforms in the NFL. Who is that? Nate? <laughs> yeah. What are you, what's, what, what's so funny? <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it, but <laughs> I guess I'm so used to seeing you with... <laughs> I'm getting the giggles. I'm, I'm used to seeing you with hair. And so with the hat and the jersey. <laughs> I look ridiculous. You just look like the ultimate fan. <laughs> Hell yeah, because I am, dude. I am. Now, Tear Talk is the alternate jerseys. I would like to, we just got to get a vote. Or is this God tier? Gotta be. Gotta be. We got all in favor. I know, uh, Garrett yeah. and Jack. Yeah. Willie? I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh. <laughs> All right, tier talk. Wait, best. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is it God's tier? Do you agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, you said I. Like, I thought he was about to make a big announcement. <laughs> no, no, I. Like, all in favor? Oh, I. I. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. All in favor? I. All right, God tier. God tier, best unis. Alternative unis. Alternative uniforms. The Titans, the Oilers, whatever you want to call it. Tennessee Oilers. The Tennessee Oilers. Hell yeah. They got to go to this. Like full time. They got to say, hey, that was a fun five years of having the old Titans uniforms. They need to change their name to the Tennessee Oilers and start repping these bad boys they all the really time. They really do, man. God, that would be what? so fucking sick. I'm the new with, helmets and everything I'm too. That. I'm with that. And you do, then you have like these OGs. You put those on and then you do a couple of alternates that maybe bring the Tennessee like sword back and stuff like that. You know, switch it up with a little bit of flair. I think the new, I think the newer uniforms are sick, but these ones, you can't fucking beat these, dude. You cannot. Yeah, you really can, man. There's six different unis that have dropped: the Titans, the Seahawks, Buccaneers, Vikings, Colts, and Browns. Let's rank. I think we need to rank all of them. You want to go all six? Yeah, I Can think we, we get need. To, I think we just need to do it. Actually, let me. Because you've probably seen photos of each one. Those are sick. Sick. Dude, that one's like a... Seahawks. That one's a close one, bro. Titans. Jets. 
The Lions. Uh, is Philly coming out with one? Golly, I know, man. I wish they would, I wish they all dropped. They'll, those ones will be sick. Yeah, I hope Washington. This might be one. Washington. Washington's got to do a Redskins one, yeah? Broncos are releasing one tomorrow. They have to. Hey, the Broncos ones are going to be sick. They go back to that orange with that classic Bronco on top. Oh no, they had the that Bronco one. That one would be fire. With you're talking about with that D. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, bro. Yeah. Okay. Those will be sick. Oh, it'll be hard once they all come out. We'll have to do a, a ranking. I will say, dude, of all the upsetting things about getting cut and stuff like that, this might be number one and not being to play a game with this fucking uniform on. I know oh, those... you with this uniform and the visor. Oh, come on, JV. Oh man, that shit would be so sick. Anyway, I digress. But those buck ones, let's. Do you want to take five boys, or do you want to roll? I'm yeah, I'm solid. I'm I'm ready to roll. I can like I can work through these. Hang on, go up to the uh down to the eagle one. Oh, it's not officially released. That one's gonna be nasty, dude. So we got. So let me just say it one more time: Titans, Bucks, Seahawks, Jets, Lions, Minnesota, Colts, Browns. That's what we got right now. That's eight. Okay. I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready from the little piece I just got. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. So one across the board is Titans. My two. Okay. So God tier Titans. My one is going to go to the Buccaneers. That orange, that creamsicle, whatever the fuck it's called. That shit goes so hard. The pirate on the side. That's fucking dope. My two is going to go to the Seahawks. I think the classics, I think they look awesome. I love how the Seahawks have been able to do like all the neon and stuff like that and make it actually work because it's such like a, a flashy color for an NFL team. But the classics, dude, those are so sick to me. And my three is uh, going to go to Minnesota. The Minnesota helmets, the classic, like the purple people eaters, it brings you back. Like it is, it is a fucking hitter, dude. It's a hitter. And so th that would be my... My three. Do you want me to do the other three? Yeah, I keep doing the rest. Okay, so my other three. Let me see. Can I see the Lions, please? It's just, it's just a helmet. Let me see it, though. Uh, yeah. Damn. I thought theirs came out. It's like all gray. It's not, yeah, this is all, all they release. All right. The Lions... Is not going to be in there right now. I've done these four. I'm going to go honorable mention. So number four for me is going to be the Jets. The next one is going to be... It kind of... These next three to me are kind of like whatever because you're, you're doing so much history with the ones I just said. And that is just a cool feeling because it truly brings you back to your childhood. I want to see the Broncos ones. I want to see the Eagles ones. But I'll go just of like what I think looks cool. I'm going to go Browns next. I think that all white does look dope with the helmets. I'll go Colts after that. And then based on just the helmet with the Lions, I'll put Lions in last place there. That is going to be my all six. And with that, I'll take you guys' as one word. Who was the last one you did? The, I think my last pick was Lions. I, but I think it's close between the Colts and the Lions. Exactly. Right. Solid. <laughs> Always solid. Nice. <clears throat> Perfect. It's exactly what my... Those are all my exact thoughts, too. I think Colts and Lions are very close. It seems like the Lions are doing the all-grays, which I think is so gay when you do an all-gray uniform, especially with the Lions color blue, too. I just don't feel like it pops that well. It's kind of like pick your poison between the... Like a, like a Colts blue and black. Or the, like the Lions blue and gray, and I, the Colts just edge it out on, you know, being not the fucking suckiest. Because I think the Colts suck too. Yeah, the Colts ones look kind of cool. Like, I don't know, because I do like, like the Titans uniforms when they go all blue. I think that looks really good. And then the Titans uniforms when they're all white with the white helmet, I thought it looked really good too. That like, keeping the same pattern. I, I always the, enjoy With that. the Oilers stuff? No, I'm talking about like with the with the newer, the the newer not 
old Titans uniforms, but the most recent ones, not the, not the throwbacks. I'm just as a reference to the Colts. I like how they do the, the blue helmet, the same color as the pants, the same color as the jersey. Got you. But that being said, like, I think the reason why the, the Cleveland Browns were above them is they just look cooler. They just... They yeah, look, I, don't, I don't think the Browns are terrible. I don't think the Browns are either. terrible. But you just, like, with the, the top three, excluding the God tier, obviously, like, you're getting that fucking, like, man. I remember that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Especially Tampa, because low-key Tampa is close to t Tennessee. Like, it's a close... Yeah, we're talking probably 1A, 1B type situation. Because yeah. the Buccaneers one does fuck hard. The best part about the Tennessee Oilers uniforms is it just pisses people off in Houston. That fucking debate of, like, we own this, that's not, nah, that's not the Tennessee thing, yeah. that, to me, puts it over the top. Like, they're dope-ass uniforms, but then to take one of your big, biggest rivals... And kind of give him the bird, that's fucking dope. And you and signed D Hop. That's a good point, Gary. I think another one you need to look out for because I think they released what the helmet's going to be right down in Atlanta. Yeah, They're bringing the red helmets back. Yeah, Those yeah. the Falcons are going to be bro. sick too. But you got to go like old school, like when you go the alts. Got to go the old school. Yeah, too many rules. Except for the Packers, those old schools fucking suck. Dude. Is that the fucking Steelers ones too? Yeah, those the bumblebees. They look or whatever like bumblebees. The fuck they were. Yeah, man, those kind those suck. But as a player, if you play for the Steelers, like you do want to play a game in those, just to fucking have it. Yeah, just, just to have yeah. a jersey. Like, hey, yeah, this shit's sick. Well, JP, you're gonna say something? No, no, no. You kind of leaning up weird. I was just making sure. Stretching, yeah. Yeah, yeah. get that little back right, kid. Like father, like son. You guys feel any different? On the uh, tier talk, we're yeah, no. yeah. I think we're that's a great. That's got to be a great feeling. Yeah, all of us sitting there. We're all in uniform. Nice, except for two of us. <laughs> all right, I, all right, just, I, I meant all of our picks. Yeah, no. we had to do pet peeve of the week as well. So let's knock out pet peeve of the week and let's rip out of here, boys. I think maybe a universal pet peeve of the week is, um. Not getting to the episode. Mm. Huh? Not getting to the episode. People are always upset about the... Well, not everyone, but some people are upset about the intros. Like, oh, we just want to get to the interview. Where's Tom? Yeah. Like, you can't fast forward to the interview. Yeah. Grow up. Yeah, and you can literally go in the information and be like, interview starts at this number. Exactly. And you click it, and then it's there. Right? Yes. There's and no I'm all in the information. It, so that can just be our universal pet peeve, so that way we can just... Boom, we hit the pet peeves. Okay. All right, let's hit it, yeah, dude. Not hit, not get Universal pet peeve also. Not getting to the episode fast Three-year-old terrorist. <laughs> That's also what I just want to put that in there. A little side dish to the yeah. pet peeve of the week. But so everybody of, complaining you did not win. Huh? The people complaining about us not getting to the interview, they didn't win right, by this. Right, right, right. Yeah. You're fighting your battles, We're just though. acknowledging, like, right. we'll do this one pet peeve because we do have Tom Segura on, and he was phenomenal. He was great. Everybody's going to love it. And a lot of people, one person in particular was like, he kind of... Doesn't say a whole lot. You kind of you got to warm him up a little bit from the from the get go. He was fucking on, dude. It was a great podcast, yeah. all and all. Let's fucking hit this ad and then rip. Yeah, and hey, your eyes are popping with that blue on. Oh, that fires me up. Yeah, that hat's a keeper for you for sure. No, I will. Yeah. I, I will take that into <laughs> your shirt backwards. Yeah, you know how people would do it back in the day. They brought that backwards jersey. Yeah, people would. Yeah. I don't remember that. <laughs> I mean, no. <laughs> hey, Jack, Jack knows. Jack sees it. I know. All right. You want to hit this Duke Cannon? Duke Cannon. We like to talk about your shower game for a minute. Here's the facts, boys. The body wash you're using right now is weak, watered down, and probably smells like a JV locker room. Simply put, you suck. The boys need a shower of substance after a hard day's work, and that's why we use thick, high-viscosity body wash from Duke Cannon. Thicker is better. Duke Cannon's thick body wash is built to work hard and not spew down the shower drain. All their scents are amazing, but the boys' personal favorite is that midnight swim. Yes, it smells like a cannonball into a moonlit lake and not a dip in the hot tub at the Starlit Motel. You have to try Duke Cannon, so for a limited time, we're hooking the boys up with 20% off your first order at DukeCannon.com with code THEBOYS20. That's 20% off when you use code THEBOYS20 at DukeCannon.com. Duke Cannon. Work harder, smell better. Back to the episode. All right, boys, we are in uh, Barstool HQ. Everybody's taking the week off, not us. Finally tracked down the Tom Segura. We talked to you what, on FaceTime 
while you were shooting Two Bears, One Cave one day back in March, I believe we it was. We did. I think we've, we've been on text threads. Mm -hmm. I saw you at the Machine premiere. It's been a whole thing. And I thought I was going to do press run leading up to the 4th. Mm -hmm. And I was like, All right, I think I'd probably do like a stop in Nashville. And then they moved it to this week. And I was like, and then you guys said you're going to be here. I was like, fuck yeah. Let's well, yeah, we had, uh, we had to pivot because we're fans. We are massive fans. fans. Oh, thank you. And yeah. uh, when Taylor and I was going back and forth, I was like, it doesn't sound, I was like, I was texting with your guy or you, we were in that group chat. I'm like, it sounds like he might be coming through Nashville still, but the people on the bar side was like, oh, I think he's just doing New York. And then we found out you're doing New York. It's like, hey, we got to, oh, uh, we got to get out to New yeah. York, dude. We usually come out here a lot anyway. So it was, nice. it was an easy little deal it's for a us. Fun, it's a fun stop, right? It is. Usually when we come here, it's like we take the same flight we did this morning. We, you know, 5 a.m. Crews get here at 9 and then we spend all day here and then take the earliest flight out the next day. It's, it's kind of always, a, yeah. It's always like you a didn't get off, get out. Deal. Do you do a like a little like, you know, enjoy New York, like go to an awesome place for dinner, that kind of thing, or no? No. no. Really? Not really. Usually like rip around the corner. Like, what was that place we went to the other day? It's like right over here by the hotel. Oh, I hate butchering it because. But it it's like this fire small food. little like hole in the wall. Sometimes like, those Asian are awesome. Cuisine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's awesome. awesome. Do you remember what it's called, JP? It's like pig something. This shit kind of gives me anxiety though, New York. It's fucking stressful, man. Where'd like, you grow up? I grew up in Arizona. Okay. Cape Cape Small Arizona. town, Missouri. 5,200 people. Oh, yeah. This is a big departure. Dude, yeah, it's You crazy. get off. You just, like, I'm on the highway, and we're in our Uber, and we're driving by. He's actually watching our special on the way here. And I'm just looking out at these apartments with the windows that are so tiny. And I'm like, people just live in there. People they live in do. rooms the size of what we're in right now. It's chaos. It's, it's living nuts. in chaos. And then we yeah. hit the bagel shop, Russ and Daughters. Yeah, we had a bagel shop, and I'm thinking to myself, dude, this is, it literally was like, the scene of a gangster movie where two guys are like, talk, like talking about people are still taking tickets. Yeah. Hey, we're standing in there nervous. Uh -huh. Yeah. Like, do we just wait? I have the thing though, where I like, I don't know, man, I, I don't have to live in a city like this, but I have to be able to go to it like fairly regularly yeah. to kind of feel alive in a way. I, a, I need cities. We were having that conversation on the flight, like growing up in small towns, like you always think when you leave, like he went to Nebraska, I went to Michigan. You're like, oh, someday I'm going to be back in that small town. Someday I'm going to be back. And there, I went back recently, and I remember sitting there going, brother, if I came back here and just lived here, I don't think, I, I think I'm like, I've seen too much now. I've gone outside yeah, too yeah, much yeah. where it's like, I just can't go back to living that small town life. It's nothing against the people that live it. Could you live in Ann Arbor? No. No? No, but I, it's more of like a... It's a cool city. It's a, it's a cool city. However, like I remember playing... And then seeing dudes come, be like, yeah, I played here back in the 80s and stuff like that. And I would think to myself, man, like, go do something. Sure. Like, don't let that be the identity. But you but would. It's also like an, it's an, that's it must that, be like an ego thing. That's or that person and, and like, they're, them choosing to be like, eh, that's who I, like, hoping yeah. that that gets them something. But you'd be going there if you wanted to, to live life, is what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you wouldn't be like, hey, remember me? <laughs> like, yeah, you know, exactly. I mean, I'd be in Lincoln like, and wearing my jersey still. <laughs> oh, you fucking would. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lincoln, you you, you guys remember the Bo Pelini era? Dude, I got the best tour of the facilities there. Oh, really? Dude, man. that fires me up. Don't they roll out the red carpet there, man? It was awesome. I saw was... Bert there last week. I was like, hey, they take good care of you. And they're like, oh, bro, they are the best. But it's one of my, because I'm, I love college football. Like, I love college football. I think it's all based on, like, kind of like your household growing up. Yeah. And if, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. kids who, guys who are like, I love baseball. It's like, yeah, your, your dad loved baseball, right? Yeah. Like, that's kind of like what they were exposed to. So my dad loved college football. So we were college football. What house. was the team? That's this, this ambulance or this fire this, truck. This is just this podcasting this is in New York. Yeah, this is podcasting in New York, dude. Yeah, someone yeah, just got team? shot in the head <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right now. Um, fuck, there's a strike going on, <laughs> yeah. protest, a march happening. Wild, what was your uh, What was your squad growing up? Or still? so, it, it there's a little bit of like move. I moved a lot as a kid, but I basically became super hardcore FSU fan. But I'm like, think about it. Like I'm I'm born in '79, so like in the '80s is when I'm watching. The game and like kind of understanding what I'm watching. And then we moved to Florida. Yeah. So if you move to Florida at the height of in the 90s, you're going to pick one of the big three yeah. at yeah. the time. And so I was just like big FSU fan. It's funny because I was thinking about this, how when you hang out with like, we talk to like pro players, sometimes they talk to you like you could have to, like AJ Hawk was at my house and we were talking about he knows I'm a big fan and I was, I, I love like hearing like recruiting story. Like how'd you pick, you know, what was it like? And what was the transition like? And he's like, 
why didn't you uh, why didn't you play at FSU? And I was like, what? And he's like, <laughs> that is such a football thing to say. Yeah, I was like, what? And he goes, why didn't you play there? And I go, in the late 1990s. And he's like, yeah, you could have played there. I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah, who would I have fucking backed up Corey Simon? Like, what are you talking about, man? And he's like, he's like, you could have played there. I was like, I couldn't have fucking watched their jerseys. They would have like, he's like, I go, you. Could, I think you're thinking, could you have played there? You could have played there. I couldn't have fucking. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't have let me try out for the team there. Did he's, you play ball growing up? I played in high school. He's like, you played. You say, were you were you a beast? Like, you no, good? I mean, I was I was decent. I was you know I I started. I played both ways, but I wasn't like I got recruited by D two schools and a couple D three. I was gonna play, and I one of the coaches called me the week before camp in August. This is what would have been my freshman year. And he goes, we're excited to see you. This is like a small school in Virginia, and I was like, what? <laughs> he's like, you're. You all ready for tomorrow? I was like, I'm not coming to school there. And he was like, what? <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, you guys called in, like, June and said that I had to take a math class to go to school there. Mm -hmm. So I just I didn't take that class. And What's going to happen? He was like, you're not coming tomorrow? Like, he, he's like, camp starts tomorrow. I was like, no, I'm going to a different school. He was like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> I was like, nobody told you? And he was like, no. So he's hung up the phone. He's like, whatever. Yeah, he was like, I guess we don't have a center. <laughs> like, oh, so, you, shit, you, yeah. so you played college ball? No, 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 but no, I didn't. No, he almost played college. I, but yeah, you said yeah. you went to another school. The not that I didn't okay, play. Okay, okay, yeah, not, yeah. not, but not for playing. Not that for is playing. a D two story though, because like I don't know how it was for you when when you got there. I got shit. there in like June, my freshman year, before like going into my freshman. Right. Year. Yeah. Like you get there a couple months before, and they take the shit out of you. Senior class, yeah. like, or not senior summer class. Yeah, you take summer classes. Like you get your first couple credits in, dip the toe in before you really hit the full schedule in the fall. Because it's like the football players and the Asians all take a summer class. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there's no doubt about yeah. it. There's, dude. College football is. I love that atmosphere, dude. I just watched a video last night. They had a. It was one of those college. Like I follow like a couple accounts, and they, they were recapping the ten loudest moments of last season. Mm -hmm. It was just like random games, and watching the slides of the ten loudest moments, I got goosebumps. Like I was like, oh, like games I don't even give a fuck about. Just yeah. hearing like because the pandemonium at those games is so different. Like NFL's, like, you know, it is the top. Two. You're the best players, obviously the best game, but the college atmosphere is so fucking bonkers. Oh, you can't, yeah. The yeah, college atmosphere, like is. you get the fans. They like have chants and they do stuff in the fourth quarter, and then it's. It is a totally different scene. I'll go to all of them too. Like people, like I, yeah, I grew up a FSU, but like every time we're on tour, if we're in a college town, I always like tell my tour manager, call that fucking school, mm. see if we can do a tour. I love the tour. I don't give a fuck if it's SEC, Big Ten, Big Twelve. I, I just love being around, and like I just like coaches and like you know even like the equipment guys they're always like so fired up about yeah the they're the best dude and they fucking they're like all right you know they give you the tour they're like these are the jerseys i'm like give me that shit take all the gloves we take it all hell yeah yeah we take just all the free you stuff you can get oh yeah. fuck yeah you should do like the recruiting photos and shit too like you should that get fully suited up funny. oh dude Put yeah the wristbands the on craziest thing because i was in buffalo and I got like a, a tour of the, of the Bills place. And they have like, a, they did a, a new, they're going to do a new stadium, but they have a newer facility. So for like, you know, it's an NFL's like facility. You're like, it's nice, right? Yeah. It's like pretty modern. They're showing us all this shit and they're going, they're like, oh, this is pretty impressive. We go to Baton Rouge and we're like, what is happening? I mean, it was like Jeff Bezos's like version. He's like, yeah. is this what a college thing's like? <laughs> like we were like, I mean, we walk down this hallway that's dark and I'm like, what's going on? And it's like lit, but dark. And then when you turn, you just turn and these glass doors automatically open. And then it's, it's like heaven. It's like, psh, like super bright. And you see a silhouette of a LSU player. And you're like, what the fuck? And you walk down the hall and then there's like these statues with different LSU gear. And they're like, yeah, this is the, this is where we take recruits. I'm like, yeah, they all sign. Right. And they're yeah. like, yeah, usually when they get to here, they're right. like, I want to come. And then you turn into the locker room and it looks like Emirates first class fucking, I go, it looks like a first class. So I guess we modeled it after first class international chairs. Like, yeah. and they, they go, we monitored that our players are not getting enough sleep. So we encourage them to sleep here. And then they had an air vent like in where they put their shit so that it never smells in the locker like all this shit i was like what the fuck man it's like a hundred million dollar locker room and i was like 
All right, this is like that's one of the best facilities I think we've ever seen. We were, yeah. we were out there in the spring doing our spring tour, and we got the you painting that picture, like especially when you get through the sliding doors and the you sliding go into doors the locker room. Th- are unreal, right? And you imagine like you're 18 and you're like, ah, uh. imagine going to Oregon. Like we we were yes. in high school, 08, 09 graduating, and that was when like Oregon was at like the top of their game. New uniforms every single week, new uniform styles, Nike. They're putting everything in there, and you see the facilities. College facilities are so much different than NFL facilities. I don't. I mean, I kind of go like, am I, for especially for the guys that are like literally going from one to the next. Part of you've got to be like, the fuck is this? Oh, right? dude. Yeah, 100%, 100%. but obviously the money goes into the players in the NFL. Yeah, yeah. College, so right? Like, that's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the funny thing about Baton Rouge, <clears throat> and I love Louisiana, but if you go on campus at LSU, you're like, this is maybe the nicest place I've ever been in my life. Like the the campus is beautiful. All the buildings are the same color. The the all the plants are perfectly organized you step one foot off that campus and you're like where the fuck did i yeah, just yeah go? yeah it is like a lot they're like in their line is truly drawn well we went to the country <laughs> my my little sister went to old miss mm-hmm. and when you're in oxford it feels like a like a, a movie set of a college town mm-hmm. like when you're in and around campus you're like this feels like make believe like you feel like they're gonna like oh, all right cut and they're gonna move the fucking wall or something yeah but then you like drive out of Oxford, and you're like, all right, we should fucking lock the doors. Like, this is kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fuck out of here. Yeah. Crazy out there, <laughs> like Mississippi that. man. What are some? Yeah. Of, what are some of the best spots you've seen since you like to go on a tour wherever you go? I mean, honestly, like the the LSU thing was mind bending. You know, uh, I got I got the Nebraska tour and um, saw where uh, Indomitian's check went. That was nice of him yeah. to build the uh, <laughs> the House of Spears, like that weight room. Yeah, the weight room's fucking. When nice. did you go? Two years, two years ago, I think. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. There. we okay. were there that time. I, got, good I was just wondering. Nice if I, heard, I heard some cool stories about him. <laughs> about like, uh, Sue? Fuck. Yeah, they were like, no, he's fucking crazier than you think. <laughs> Let's like, hear a couple. Oh, I don't even know if I should tell these stories. I could, I could possibly confirm or deny that it's like a real psychopath <laughs> playing. Like you're like this guy's crazy. Like no, this guy is crazy. Yeah, but it's not like definitely in between the white lines, but not not off the field. I don't know, but what was that story you told about getting a ride to the airport or something? And you thought he was going to beat the shit out of you. Yeah, he said uh, like I'll pull the car over and fucking stomp on you because I, I was. Wait, you're in a car? Just putting Will in yeah, a we were, uh, suit. Yeah, we were having a lunch somewhere, and then when we were driving him to the airport, I built up, I mustered up the courage to bring up him stomping on Aaron Rodgers. I was like, you're going to, so you're going to say that the man upstairs knows what happened, but you clearly stomped on 12. And he's like, well, we can pull the car over now and I'll stomp your ass I'll out. I'll stomp your ass out. But, you know, that's just fun play. He's, you know playing what I mean? he's not a psychopath. Not at all. No, not at all. That's just fun. It's just us being us being dudes. It was all all the stories I heard were like at Nebraska, like because obviously yeah, like everybody's more aware of the NFL stuff because on tape you just yeah. fucking yeah. Like, hey let's use, let's watch a compilation of Sue trying to kill people <laughs> millions yeah. of views yeah. Yeah. on YouTube. Yeah, and you're like this is fucking nuts. It's crazy. And like for a guy that big, that strong, and that upset <laughs> to bro be. and he never got tired in any of the workouts it was truly unfucking real and even when they say like at tampa because sue went to tampa went to miami know, right he, no no he also he also played yeah he played in miami too but when he played for tampa he had a, a couple, couple he's years had multiple stops he yeah like he's at detroit a, miami tampa Rams. right right but when he was at tampa and i was talking to levante david who is an unreal linebacker but I was like, yo, what's uh, what's Sue like in the locker rooms now? Because we're all kind of like around the same kind of generation. Sure. And he's like, like Sue's one of the savviest businessmen like in the NFL, like in between meetings, in, right after practice, in between all this stuff. He's like on conference calls, like handling meetings, like Warren Buffett is like in his council. It's insane. Like the dude is super impressive. He had an engineering degree at Nebraska, but an absolute, to your point, an absolute psychopath on the field. Like we were at Baylor and he got a, he got a penalty for tackling the quarterback too hard. This was before all the protecting the quarterback stuff came out because he essentially like choke slammed the Baylor quarterback. It was insane. Yeah. Cole McCoy said he was puking up blood after the Big Twelve championship because he. There's he got a couple hit stories so that I honestly would tell you. I'll I'll tell you off. I really don't feel like I should tell you. I should tell okay. You. <laughs> yeah, okay. But yeah. there's the one that I, I I think is fun to to tell that I heard when I was there was like how you know they do this thing. It's so fucking weird that when there's bowl games, they're like, why don't you guys like have dinner together? 
the night before. Like, right? Like you're having, like you're playing Texas in a bowl game. They're like, how about a, a both teams have dinner? They put you in a banquet hall. And yeah, the like banquet hall dinner. Competitions. Like, what? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even when you're watching it from, you're like, why are they having dinner? And then like they're, everybody's like a table away. So I guess when, for the bowl game that year, it was Nebraska. I forget who it. Maybe Kansas, Kansas State, or something. We played when Sue was there. Clemson and Arizona. Maybe Holiday Bowl. Yeah. So there's some bowl guy. Let's just say it's Arizona. So then they go, all right, and he's having his monster year, right? Like a, like he's having a unstoppable. He's getting every award. So they're at the the like the ESPN people come to like dinner and they're like, how's the chicken? And they're asking everybody stupid shit. And then they ask the uh the center for like let's say arizona like oh you have to face in dominican suit tomorrow and he's he's won every award for defensive player of the year how do you feel about that and he goes i'm not that worried about it and he said that when i heard the story they said that all the nebraska guys they were right because they were all sitting together they just went like like they just leaned forward and they're like oh shit and they saw sue just like okay like eat and they they're like we already knew like right then that it was going to be a problem. Yeah. And he goes in the game, in the game, Sue picked him up like o- like basically over his head and p- threw him head first down onto his head. Onto his the center. And like he had a neck injury and left the game. <laughs> <laughs> like he dude, I mean I was like god damn. We did beat Anytime him, like, you put the seven. Like it was all, by the time I got in the league, Sue was out of Detroit and he was in Miami or whatever. We played Miami like two or three years in Miami. And they're like, uh, there's all be always like older, savvy offensive linemen there. And they'd be like, whatever you do, do not talk to Sue. Just don't and, talk and to And I him. was, yeah, like my rookie year and stuff like that was really mouthy. And I would, I would talk to, you know, try to talk shit to everybody. Yeah. And then, um, I tried to t- talk shit to Sue and he kind of looked at me in the center in the huddle, grabbed me by the collar and told me to shut the fuck up because I don't have to deal with him. He's like, shut the fuck up. You do not, do not talk to him anymore. And I was like, okay. Wow. Enough. He was like a three year, I think it was Brian Schwenke. Oh and it was my like, gosh. The dude is dude, a, he, yeah. it was like, like there are those guys in the league that when they get a little older, they become a little bit more mellow. And I think Sue, he signed a massive deal, hundred million dollar deal at that point. Then it was like, just don't do don't anything. Provoke him. Don't provoke him. Don't off. poke the bear. If you poke the bear, Bears gonna eat you. It'd be like cocaine bear. <laughs> You're wow. gonna be done. Yeah, you'll be fucking done. What was your shit talking like? Like, were you just like my my shit talking varied in a lot of different ways. Like, I'd hit I hit it with the classic, like uh, you know, I'm your pussy that dick. that type of stuff. Yeah. But then there'd be times like the NFL is a super like it, it can be homophobic. A lot of yeah. guys like, we don't play that shit in the locker room. So yeah. some dude be mouthing off to me. Uh, we were playing the Jags one time. And it was <laughs> we were switching quarters. So like we're like walking in the middle of the field because we're like on the thirty yard line. So we have to go the opposite thirty yard line. Yeah. And um. One defensive lineman, a three technique, he's walking behind me like, I'm here all day, blah, blah, you can't block me. <laughs> yeah, and I yeah. turn around, I'm like, bro, you listen. If that, if, if you don't stop talking, I'm going to suck your dick. Yeah. And our center comes out of nowhere, unprovoked, he goes, and we swallow here too. And the rest of the game, he was like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> you fucking, you, you fucked just, them up. Yeah, if you just say yeah. super gay things to yeah. other NFL players, like I've had other players like go from like the Raiders to uh, the Titans and be like, hey, what's up with 77? Is he actually gay? Like, what's what's the deal? Like, yeah. I, that's, it's a mind game. Yeah, it's a mind it's, game. It's yeah, I mean, when I was, when I was at the Raiders, I was like, hey, so what's up with your, uh, what's up with your boy? Yeah. yeah that's just, that's yeah. just my guy, man. That's just my guy. I'm more do. of like, I champion everybody. I tell everybody, hey, that was a solid route. That was good. That was good. Because yeah. I want, you know. That's the white guy. I need move. as much as I can to like, I got to sneak you at some I've point. I've told this story before. I played in high school against Heath Evans. Mm-hmm. He was a fullback for like 10 seasons in the NFL. He went to a really, we played at small schools in Florida. And uh, I mean, it was, ob- he was obviously different than like the average person you played against in high school. Yeah. You're like, what in the fuck? It's like hitting a bank door, you know? Like, like every time you hit, you're like, God damn. I mean, he was just like, he was built different. He was clearly gonna move on. And, but, so he played at a school that like, they were terrible. He was the star player at a terrible school mm-hmm. like that we would beat them but he would still he would play he played like running back and linebacker so he would still have like 18 tackles and 230 yards right but they would lose but every single time you if you tackled them i mean it would it would it'd take the whole team he'd be like that was a great tackle and you'd be like what and like we were so not you know like like who does this sounds like andrew Luck. and he would like he would pat us on the back he's like great effort i was like shut the fuck up man yeah. he would do it the it, it wasn't even for 
like a, a a series. It was the entire game. Great effort, great block. You did a good job. Frustrate the shit out of you. Yeah, every time you're like, "What do you do?" And then and he's actually he was religious, so he would say like, "God, like God bless," and like do prayer stuff. And, and I was like, "Is this?" Like, I, are you fucking with me? Dude, and like, the funniest thing we talk about, like religion and football, which is it's so great. many religious guys, so many religious guys. But in the locker room after warmups, there'll be rap music going on about yeah. eating pussy and getting <laughs> yeah. money and doing drugs, and then it'll cut, and I'll be like, "All right, prayer in the shower," and everybody like walk in the shower and hold hands. And then as soon as they walk back out, press play back in. Fucking bitches getting money and all that stuff, and you're like, "Hey, does no one see I wish the parody in this?" The, ne the NFL would never allow. I, I, Never allow their shit talking to air. Yeah. Because they they'll release, you know, the mic'd up stuff, but it's all edited and cut. Yeah. That would be such a fucking dream. I, I always said I would pay it like a thousand dollar like season pass. Like, oh, we can hear the guys on that be like, hey, I'm gay. Come suck this dick and we'll yeah. swallow. <laughs> okay. I'd be like, I'd be like I'll the best money. The best spent money you've ever had. Ever. There, there's some great shit talkers out there. I mean, DJ Swearinger, we talk about him from Swagoo. Uh, the Gamecocks. Like it, what what was it? Was it you telling the story about him during uh, the Outback uh, Bowl? Yeah, the Outback Bowl mm -hmm. pregame and all that. Pregame, like, our, our returners are catching footballs, and he pushed one of our returners out of the way, caught one of our footballs, and kicked it into the stands. <laughs> this is at Tampa Bay Stadium for a bowl game, and he goes, "This is my fucking house. Get the <laughs> fuck out of here." And I'm in the locker room just warming up, and this little white returner, Drew Dilio, shout out Drew Dilio, he comes in hot, mad, and sure enough, it was Swagoo. That dude was two spoon Swagoo. He man. is different now. Dude. Yeah, he was a different cat. Whoa. Dudes are just like that, though. Some guys, it varies, man. Some dudes do not do not say a word. Some guys are super positive. Some guys are super negative. It's like, you never know who you're going to get. Yeah. You just never know. And it's how, I mean, I think I think it is how the, the stress of competition and what you're about to do affects everyone differently. Mm -hmm. So for some people to perform in, in that environment, it's, hey, shut down, don't say a word. For some, it's like this, the... The stress of it makes them chirp a lot. Some of them, like, I'm going to stay pot. Like, it's that's why you just don't know what you're going to get. But it's like, it's like the stress of the unknown, like the unknown of battle, right? Like, yeah. like you don't know what's going to happen. And that it manifests itself differently through everybody. Like, I mean, I've seen guys who were like incredible athletes, incredible athletes shut down, quite like, right. not talk. They were right. like, my game does all my talk. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which is a cool saying. That's like a Rex Burkhead. Like when Rex was at Nebraska, he was just a baller, but the dude was like, you know, just head down. Yeah. Hand the ball to the ref, do his thing. And then when that guy does say something, it, it's so powerful. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We had a kid, we had a kid in high school on our high school team who won the 100 and 200 meter track state championship. Well, this kid is legit fast as fuck. I mean, he's the 100 meter champion in Florida. Mm -hmm. And he's our punt returner and corner. He's 5'7. He ended up playing at Citadel, a corner at Citadel, but like he's 5'7", 160 pounds and looks like a fucking, like a bodybuilder. Like a Tyreek Hill type. Yeah, dude. Like, and you're, I mean, and, and you're in high school and you're like, this guy is fucking, this is insane. Like his, how talented he is. And he was super religious and they would, he was a workhorse. Like he won games. You know what I mean? Like the, the, there's games we definitely would have lost that like he took a punt back, kickoff, just... And people, you know, when we played teams with like those badass dudes that would talk mad shit, and he would always, always just hand the ball to the ref and never say anything. And then one time we played these punk mother, like these guys that were such fucking dirty shit bags. And when they, they tried to hurt him and we, he popped up when he was, you can suck on my left nut to this kid. And we were all like, oh shit. <laughs> like, like yeah. Jay says that shit. Like we just, we couldn't believe it. But it, like everybody for like a week we're just like going to practice. We're like, suck on my left nut. He's like, ah, I was just, you know. Yeah. Like, in the moment. Oh, yeah. In the yeah, moment. Yeah, he almost apologized for it after the game. Yeah, yeah, goes, yeah, I'm, yeah, sorry, I'm sorry. I spoke up that. during yeah, that drive. Yeah. I think yeah. it's insane how dudes can talk shit and play at a high level because I'm thinking like my conditioning can't take all that. I, like I'm just trying to get back to the huddle, relay the play. I'm thinking how do these dudes just yeah, but run as their a linebacker, mouth You have so much time. responsibility as a linebacker with the green dot. Yeah, like, it, it, and I, you know, you just like subtle jokes out there. It's like, you know. I can't remember, but the first time we played, I know like we tapped helmets. But if I'm like tapping a white guy out there on the ass, I'm like, hey, I can't believe we're out here. Am I right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just we get, get back it, huh? to the fucking thing. <laughs> I remember Greg Olson. I've told the story before, but Greg Olson, I finally had my opportunity to start. It was like my second or third game starting, I believe. And I remember breaking up a pass over the middle. He just, you know, buttoned up over the middle and I broke it up and did the little, you know, I did the little incomplete thing. And then I webbed him like Spider Man. He goes, Who the fuck are you? What are you like, third string? And I was like, Hey. 
I'll work for this spot, man. I'll work for this spot. <laughs> and then, like, during the time out, he comes over, he, like, taps me on the helmet. And he's like, hey, man, I, I'm really sorry for saying that. Like, I know you work hard. I know this and that. No I was like, oh, shit. dude, it, it's all good, bro. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. That is, the, like, like, fuck, that's actually impressive to, like, hey, man. I, I respect you. I <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Also, Absolutely. If I, if I hurt you in an emotional way, I don't. I don't <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fucking, yeah. The weirdest thing is playing against people that you've been, you grew up watching. Yeah. Like we played the Raiders my second or third year, and Charles Woodson was there, and I remember we were like on a timeout. I'm like, hey, dude, and like you're fucking awesome, and it was so weird just to say it. And he's like, thanks, young blood, appreciate that. All right. Yeah, All right, yeah. Appreciate it. I'm like. I'm gonna get the fuck out of here. Michigan, you gotta just go Michigan, back to the huddle. Yeah. And you're like, how old? He's like, I'm 42. And you're like, you're fucking 42 years old. It's crazy, dude. It's crazy. Hello. Yeah. And like, I don't know if that's like, because you hear stories, but like, there the stories about Woodson that people were said, they're like, yeah, he just like is that, like, he's not killing himself in the weight room or like, he's just that's good. better than everybody. Yeah. I heard he was like a, an absolute, you know, study he was all about it like the film room and everything else that's the thing that impresses me the most to when i watch like these pieces on players because you just as a as a spectator you just go like oh this is like a, a super gifted athlete we've seen like you see athletes and you're like wow this guy's so just blessed right with his like physical abilities is that when you hear how committed some people are to studying shit you're like oh that that's why they're great yeah. like, like they are gifted right but the dedication is other level. That's what keeps people in the league for a while too, is just the ability to play from the neck up and everything else because your body ends up breaking down. Like, yeah, you got to stay on top of your body and everything else. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you got to stay on top of your body and everything else, but that is like, that's where the majority of the league, the guys that like stick around for a long time, you have to like- I love this shit. You have to be, if yeah. you're not a starter, if you're not out there on the field, you have to be like just a dependable backup and somebody like in my position and then get, like play special teams. Yeah. But- yeah, you always hear the stories about like some of the greats that people come from, players that come from other teams and they're coming on your team and they're telling you about these guys that you look up to on other teams and they're like, man, so and so is in the, you know, in the building, doesn't leave till like seven or eight at night and everything yeah. else. And you're just kind of like fascinated by it. We interrupt this episode to bring you Body Armor, the official hydration partner of Busting with the Boys. Mm. We hydrate with Body Armor and ride with Team Body Armor. We have been drinking Body Armor from the beginning because they have the best products, best flavors, best ingredients, and best athlete partners and best podcasting partners no artificial shit no fake ingredients real hydration with electrolytes potassium vitamins and more we fly through this shit boys if you haven't tried it you're living under a rock you need to get on the body armor wave now some of the top athletes and podcasters in the world drink this shit over gatorade and the competition i'm talking trey young christian mccaffrey will compton alex morgan donovan mitchell tara lawan ronald acuna and more Favorite flavor right now is strawberry banana fruit punch. We say, damn, I was rolling. Why did the fucking throw in the et cetera? Strawberry banana fruit punch. You're supposed to just say one of those. Damn, that pisses me off. My favorite is the fruit punch. We stay drinking this shit, boys. In the office, at the gym, on the bus, on the golf course. We Love this shit. All body armor, all the time. Buy body armor right now on Amazon. Back to the episode. Tony Gonzalez told me this thing that I thought was such a cool, like, little insight. So he played, like, what, 17 seasons? Yeah, he was nuts. At tight end. It's fucking insane. And he's like, I, you know, I'm asking him, like, how? Because he's, like, fine. Like, he just walks around. You're like, you're okay? And he's like, well, he goes, you know, I figured out that, like, if I caught a ball... And I see the guy coming right here and I'm on the sideline and I just like, you know, I cover up. If he's coming this way, I'll just start to fall the way, you know, with the hit. Yeah. He goes, so a lot of times you would hear like, ooh, like, because it would look like I got blown smoked. up. He's like, I was already going in that direction that, so, that the, so that the hit wouldn't have the, the same level of impact, right? Because if I lean in, I'm going to fucking lean into him. It's going to be up. We're going to hit, and it's, I'm going to feel it more. But if I'm, I know I'm about to get hit this way, and I lean that way, he's like, it's less impact. And I was like, oh, that's fucking fa – like, it's like most people or a lot of people, I guess, would go, no, no, I'm going to, like – I'm going to put my shoulder into this shit. And he was like, no, no, I was like, I'm trying to minimize the damage. Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm doing that for, like, 12 of the seasons I play. Did the ability to displace ego. 
That's then a you're big young, displacement of you. Yeah. If you're a lot of guys are like, I'm gonna try to show how hard I can run this. And then as you get older, you learn like, hey, this isn't forever. How can I make this as long as possible? Sounds like fucking did it. Yeah, dude. I saw Stefan Diggs shoulder pads and they look like paper plates. And I was like, how the fuck? And the guy's like five seven or yeah. something. Yeah. And they're just like, yeah, but like when he sees the guy, he just like scoots down. I mean, remember like, uh What's his name? Is it Michael Bennett, the D tackle for the Seahawks or the D end? Yeah. Remember, he basically wore like nothing. Yeah, he would cut out the, there. There was like a one big shoulder pad and then a, a shoulder pad that went here. He'd cut those off and tuck his jersey in. Yeah. Or the baggiest jersey and shit. Yeah. He's this is funny. something I completely don't understand is like how you got, like when you start watching and you know, like you play in high school and you're all padded up and you see college and then you see NFL guys and you're like are there no leg pads like doesn't everyone aren't everyone's legs fucking hurting like just yeah. just like just the the pants on you're like there's no thigh pads anymore it's I like it's kind the, of the, uh, swag. The hip pads hip pads kind of go away in college yeah hip pads yeah, kind of went away kinda, in college you used to have you'd have like the girdles or whatever yeah and then you kind of just go to a girdle or something that can with like the most small pad just to see like you're just making sure you don't get in trouble like you're wearing the right appropriate attire yeah and then eventually you just stop like really wearing anything that's really crazy though yeah it's, it's crazy because you're 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 shedding things as competition gets higher yeah. and as everyone is bigger faster and stronger you're like yeah just fucking let it go but, but also a little like, bit more yeah. you know i know a lot of people it, it's like you want to wear you want to be like as light as possible because the game gets faster at every level and everything else so you're trying to feel as free as possible while also like trying to be a little bit protected. This and, is the, and I think it plays into looking better too. A yeah, I was going to say that the like legs stuff. Bigger, bulkier pads, it's like so it's not a good So it's all about look. looking good. It's not all about Some that. Some swag, you know what I mean? Get a little. You want to, I mean, you see the guys, we all got the yeah. socks low yeah. or high, yeah, a yeah. bunch of little things on there. Like they're, like they're dudes in there hours before the game, getting their little shit right, little black really? stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. They do a whole bunch Absolutely. of stuff. Absolutely. Anytime you get a comment like, hey, come, come on, man, you got to do a little bit better than that. You're just thinking, you, get yeah, me you're, right. You're get me right. That might be the worst trip he gets all day. <laughs> like you're just like, man, they're kind of killing. Like you kind of want to look good. You want to look like you can do something. Yeah, yeah. Like a dark visor. I wore a dark, dark Have visor. To. Yes. It's the it, best looking, those it's the, the best looking piece of attire in the NFL. Those are tight. And they used There's, to have like, in the 90s, they had like the, the orange, like the reflective gold. The oil spill. Yeah. Back God when they like damn. allowed that, dude, I know. Because you man. see a linebacker over the middle just like this, and he looks like a he looks like a Terminator or something, yeah. right? Like you just see gold reflective sheen. Mm -hmm. and you don't see eyes. You're like, ooh, this is a badass look. Like yeah. that shit was tight. Just picturing like a Ray Lewis from Miami. Yes, with the, dude. With the orange, and then you see the little the little the ring go mask. down with that linebacker face mask that just was, roam in the middle. That really is swag. You like that? Those teams were like. I remember when I was when we were in high school. I went to the you get taped up mm -hmm. and i asked the there was a lady that taped us i was like will you give me the the bruce smith tape you remember his tape wait, he, wait, like, it would come over the hand like it was like a boxer's tape so yeah. his hand was taped in addition to the wrist it was like wrist and then here and she was like no and i was like <laughs> i was like no she's like for what i was like for my fucking hand <laughs> yeah 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 i was like i was like bruce smith has she's like you ain't bruce smith and i was <laughs> That's like so funny high school high school trainers are hilarious yeah they're just like catching hours yeah yeah, like, yeah. Well, they want to tape the minimal amount of people they possibly can of course but that hey tape goes away too in the nfl Tape like does people. Some people, as you get older, as I got older, at least I stopped taping my ankles. Stopped taping. Did you really? Stuff. Yeah. I I always felt so much more like stable. Yeah. You secure. start to learn about the body though. And if you you if you, you immobilize the ankle, then it puts more pressure on the knee, which puts more pressure on the hip, and then it's the back. And you really? Like, and what about up here though? Nothing either. I would wear. I went from tape, and I started wearing wrist guards. So you just kind of strap them on real fast, and then I broke this thumb. So I had to put like a a little brace on there and then I, I tape like these two fingers. Do you remember it. everybody having tons of shit on and then Reggie White just was like, just put the jersey on. <laughs> like just not, no the gloves. Guys. no, And then just take people and go. Poof. I always think it's badass when you see the dudes just have their like uh, like fingers taped. Yeah, the fingers You're taped. You kind of them a little bit. Not, I feel like I got to have for guys with their hand in the dirt. I think that shit is lame. I'm thinking of like DBs. Yeah, DBs got that looks hard. But like a dude with his hand in the ground and he's got his, his knuckles saying like, bro, you ain't Come on. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you don't wear gloves, you're a psychopath to me. Yeah. Like yeah. The thought of hitting somebody without gloves I, on. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, could, like, I couldn't do that. Get the fuck out of here. Can no you imagine way. him, though? Like, he would just show up completely nothing mm -hmm. and then take, a like, a 330-pound guy with one with that hump move mm -hmm. and go like this, and you see the guy, come, like, just go falling Fly. down. Flying down. Like, he'd launch a guy, like, 10 yards. There is nothing more embarrassing 
than getting put on the ground like that. It has to be, right? Unless you just catch one in the throat. You get put on your ass, and then they make the sack, and you're just like, dude, I am nothing. <laughs> what feels what feels worse? Um, getting, like, having somebody stronger than you toss you or somebody so fast that they just are past you, and you're like, fuck, that, like, they're, they're back here, and you're like, what just happened? Whiffing on somebody is tough, but I feel like for me, I could always, like, in my mind, be like, okay, you get to change these couple of things. There's no worse feeling than having another man's hands on you and not have, you can't do anything about you it. You can't do it, yeah. And you're just like, well, I guess we're just going to go where you want to go today. Wow, yeah. Yeah, that's a tough feeling. That's, that's like, the worst feeling actually ever. So that's it, like, it has to be, too, for, like, an old lineman. Like, dog. I'll just feel guys in the trenches. Because I know for me, it's like, you get outrun or you get beat on your feet, I'm thinking, God damn it, they were all right. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God damn it. I know I coaches over there like, we should not have fucking ran cover one with Compton in the game. <laughs> But like if I get if I get bodied or something, you're kind of just like fuck on the way down. But yeah, you know, you know like Marshawn Lynch, you, we always get God. Everyone gets God. But I feel like as an old lineman, it's got to be the like a demoralizing thing. Like you just get manhandled in the trenches, and you're yeah. like you're a guy in the trenches. That That's has a tough to be feeling. yeah. When you stopped playing football, when did you start comedy? When was that like? When did you know that was the path? Great transition. Thank by you, the way. brother. We that was good. Been, we just been fucking talking ball. The we've, whole we've, we've lowered his well enough. Yeah. It's time to get into all I want to talk about. Yeah. Um, I mean, so I I get to college. I realize, like, you know, I'm not. It is weird because it becomes like I mean, you have a, a more of it. Like, you know, it's like your identity. You're like, oh, people are like, what are you like? I play football. Like, yeah. In, in high school, you're like, I'm a football player. That's what you think you are. And then you get to college, and you're like, I'm not. Mm -hmm. um i'm definitely like there's players going to team meetings i'm like re i'm ready to go i'm like oh i don't play football yeah. and then you're just like uh i don't know i i mean i, I loved co doing comedy so I'm making like comedy videos you know but like it's not even for it's no there's not it's not the internet it's not like like i want to share this video it's like they're they're like make a video for a communications class that's boring like do a do a video about like how how uh the, how the security works in the building. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, do like show us that you can do like a transition shot. And then I would make mine like a comedic version of it, you know? And then there were like the teacher would be like, the fuck is this? Right? Like, because yeah. I was trying to make it funny. Right. And then I, the more you do that, the more you're like, I like this. I like this. Right. So you, I keep making like comedy esque sketches, but like for assignments. Mm -hmm. And then when I, finally get out of college um i get out in um 2001 i graduate and then yeah in june of 2001 and then i moved to la january 2002 like i actually i i remember that i arrive in la january 2002 on the day that it's a it's a bowl game it's a it's ohio state miami is playing in that like a a, a big time bowl game mm. and then I start doing. I start going to improv classes at the Groundlings, which is like this renowned place where a lot of SNL people have come from. I start doing that in, in like April of 2002, and I have guys that are in the class that are like, "You should try stand up." Like they're just telling me, "Like you should try stand up. You would like stand up." I was like, "All right," because they did stand up, and then a couple of them were like, "I'll," because I was like, "What do you do?" Mm -hmm. Like I mean, I've seen stand up, but like, how do you how do you start? So I kind of tail them. They're like, just watch me. I'm going to do spots tonight. So they go and do like a spot here, a spot there. I just follow them around. And then one of them walks me into a place. And like when the, when the lady is like, oh, what's up to, the, to this guy, Nick? He's like, oh, it's Tom. He's a comic. And I'm like, what's up? And she's like, oh, do you want to do, I have, I have like an opening next Saturday. You want to do that spot? And I was like, Yeah. Oh shit! And then she's like, "All right, you're booked." And then it just kind of. And then I was like, "I'm doing a spot next Saturday." Like I've never written material or. Didn't. And so then it was just, it was just on from like once I did it, it, it is that like addictive. You're either gonna be like, "I'm not doing that again," or you're like, "I got to do that again." Mm -hmm. And it was just like that. So that was 2002, and then it was just a slow. You know, I used to do like one spot, like every two months and i'd be like yeah i've been doing stand like doing some stand-up <laughs> like thinking that that's a lot i mean i yeah. just didn't know like you have no kind of frame of reference for it and the the big clubs seem like so intimidating so i would just do like smaller shows you know like someone would be like come to this bar and do a show and i was i was kind of like scared to go into the clubs and then it just kind of just you know 
slow progression like grew from there yeah when did it like your first big break come with like breaking into the scene well i i mean uh, one of my friends was actually um working for jay moore and jay and he recommended me to be an opener and jay let me do some openings so that was definitely a a break because the improvs like that own so many clubs mm -hmm. they before jay i was like can i you know work here and they gave me a showcase i, I always tease the guy now when i whenever i see him his name is matt coman i, I go i got off stage and i had a good set like you know when you have like there's no like you can be delusional but i'm like i know when i don't do well mm -hmm. and i did well and i was mm -hmm. like What's up? He goes, you definitely have something. Like, just keep at it. And I was like, <laughs> and that was it? Like, he wouldn't give, I was like, I have something? Yeah. And he was like, yeah, just keep at it. And I'm like, okay. And he didn't book me. But then when Jay requested me to open, then they were like, now you can do spots. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he gave the green light, and then they were like, now you can do spots. So that was a, that was a big deal, because then I could work more regularly do get on stage more mm -hmm. so that was one i did a couple of things on comedy central when um people actually watched comedy central yeah and like and there was stand-up on there did you like <laughs> did the little 30 minute sets or whatever yeah that was i thought that was actually for some people that changed their careers mm -hmm. it was called comedy central presents yeah and that was that was actually the goal right like the goal was to get because everybody who you fucking admired had done comedy central presents so like i just kept i mean that's all i wanted to do so i did a i did one of their shows uh it was called live at gotham that was it used to be called premium blend and then they made a, a new version called live at gotham it was here at, at the gotham comedy club in new york i did that show that was supposed to be like the precursor to like getting a present so then you would submit what you do is you send in fucking tape or dvd no shit yeah and you'd be like here's my 30 minute set and then the lady was like, you know, you're going to get one, but not this year. And you're like, all right. So you'd work a whole other year, send in another set. And she's like, this is really good. Not this year. And you're like, fuck. And then the third year, I got it. And then I remember I had a, I had a good presents. Because some people, like, it's one of those things where, like, it, it's like having, like, a bad combine outing. You know, like, you go, Fuck. Like, I, I don't know. I just didn't run well. I didn't, I didn't, I threw up 225 eight times. Like, this sucks. Yeah. Like that happens to people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're still good. And so that happens on these tapings where you're like, I hope this goes. And it went well. And I remember the lady that was producing it goes, this is going to change your road life, like touring. And I was like, fuck. And I didn't, I didn't want to like show too much emotion. I was like, fuck yes. Yeah. And then they open the new season it's still popular at the time. This is end of 20, going into 2011. I'm like the featured like highlight new season of comedy uh, of presents. And then it aired and you know, you see the tweets and shit and you're like, fuck it. Are things like about to change? Man, shit didn't change at all. Like nothing changed. And I was Man. Like, it's like, I mean, got I, your hopes up a little bit. I mean, and then, I mean, a girl internally, goes, this is gonna change no your doubt. life. You gotta no think. She, you're probably thinking this woman knows everything. Yeah, yeah, and she produced all the Carlin specials, mm -hmm. so she's like, she's like, I mean, the real deal. Yeah, you know. And she was like, you, you know, she's like trying to like produce other things with me. And she was like, this is gonna, you're gonna see like your life change. And mm -hmm. I was like, you're trying to just like not get too excited. It'd be like someone being like, you're gonna get a phone call tomorrow from the chiefs <laughs> like yeah, yeah. i know you're enjoying college right now but things are about to change and you're like okay you're just kind of like all right cool and then chiefs are like who <laughs> yeah. i don't know like you're just like what the fuck so they uh you know you just keep going i, I remember like the big bump was that i think club a club was paying me 1500 a week to do six shows mm -hmm. And they went to 1850 and they're like, see, <laughs> your life has <laughs> yeah. changed. You're like, it's all right, over, great. Baby. So you just keep doing that. And then I did, I did in 2013, I shot my first Netflix special, but it wasn't for Netflix. It was shot on spec, which means you pay to, somebody pays for the production mm -hmm. and then you have it and then they shop it. So they, they sent it to like Comedy Central. That's where, that's where you wanted to be. People don't remember. That's where you wanted to be. And Comedy Central passed. They're like, no. And then they sent it to Showtime, and they were like, no. 
And HBO was like, are you fucking out of your mind? And then, <laughs> and then Netflix took it and it was like a consolation prize. Mm -hmm. It was like, well, the USFL's back. Yeah. You know? yeah. Like, <laughs> Which is wild to think about now. Yeah. Because like, that's where everybody wants to be now is Netflix, right? Oh, yeah. Because it's just like, it's the eyeballs. Mm -hmm. I mean, this thing is always changing. We don't know what's going to happen in next year, five years. I mean, I'm sure the landscape will change. But for the last decade, it is Netflix. Yeah. Netflix is where you want to be. And so when it, when they told me we're going there, I was like, oh. I was like, you mean the place you send DVDs to? Like, Fuck. Yeah, that's what it was. Damn. And it was a slow, it was a thing. It wasn't like it came out and then they were, I was like, oh shit. It was slow. Like it was like, uh, I, was, I would do a club and they were like, you sold like some, you sold some tickets this week. I was like, oh, really? I wasn't even thinking about the special because mm -hmm. it, it was like five months later. And then all of a sudden they're like, hey, you sold out the club. And I was like, for real? <laughs> that, we weren't like, oh, it was the special. We were like, how did that happen? Holy and then shit. it started to go like, oh, this special has gotten traction. I was mm -hmm. like, no way. But it was very slow. And by the end of the year, they were like, you're selling out every show at the club. It was how fired up were Hearing it was like, getting that kind of feedback, like man, it's really starting to get around. It is fucking. It's amazing. It is amazing, and you, you know, it's like you don't want to boast. You don't want to go like hey, fuck yeah. You're just kind of like, is this for real? Like you can't believe it's real. You can't believe it's real because like, it's so hard. You know, to grind. Like you're just like working at it, and um, at the time, I mean, whatever. That's ten. I was thirty four, thirty. Like you've been doing it for twelve years. You're like, I don't know if it's ever going to change much from this. And then to find, like, to sell out the clubs and you're like, you just can't believe that people are out there and like full and they're just, they want, and they're like, they like, I saw your shit and, I, and it's fucking, I, they love it. Mm -hmm. it. You can't believe it. And not to mention that you get like real checks. You're like, this is, a re this is crazy. Real money. It's crazy. Yeah. Every level of it is crazy. But at first it seems like, like monopoly money. You're like, this is what I used to make in a year, you know, like that, like for real, like a year. God, what a feeling. Yeah. What a fucking feeling that is. Dude. It's crazy. It is a crazy feeling. It's got to be. And just hearing the, you know, obviously like love ball and everything else and then talk about high school and then like, damn, you want to play in college and everything else. So obviously that competitive nature and that fires. Yeah. There. So when you are starting to sell out and start to like get over the hump and everything else, like. You can imagine the energy that he had when he's realizing, like, oh, yo, it's starting to fucking happen. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, it, it's like, it's beyond, I, and I kind of, you know, I know it because I've, I've experienced it now. So when I see it happening for other comics, like, I'm, I'm very excited. For, I'm like, I know what's happening to you right now, you know? Is it a, is that a split world, the comic world? Is there guys that are like, for the most part, are, are comics excited for other comics or are there other, like, is it kind of 50-50, like, hey, we don't want to help or we do want help? Because that's kind of how the NFL is. Like, yeah. when new guys come in, some guys are like, hey, come on, let's show you how it goes. And other guys are like, fuck off, you're not taking my job. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit of that. I mean, that's that, the guys that are, whatever, like, stand up, whatever, they're just insecure because, like, they don't realize that there's enough, there is enough room, like, well, you guys, there's a real, there is roster spots, yeah, right? With what we do, there's no such thing as like, if he's funny, you're done. Yeah. Like, you know, it's-, it's You're no the, longer funny. Yeah. It's, it's not it's not like that. I, but I think some people don't realize that, that like, we, we can all <clears throat> work and do shows and sell tickets. Like, it's mm. not, it, it's not really a threat to you. And I actually feel like great stand, like when I watch a stand-up and they're- like legit really good i don't go fuck i'm like this is i get excited by it like i find it kind of inspiring you know i'm like oh this is all like really good stand-up is exciting mm -hmm. and it makes me want to do stand-up it makes me want to go get back on stage i'm like that was so fucking good mm -hmm. that i want to do more stand-up you know shitty stand-up makes me like want to go home yeah. you know <laughs> go take a nap yeah i'm like this sucks yeah i, get, I get anxiety i want to leave the room like when i'm watching i'm like oh fuck and i just like i walk out of the room That's but when they're tough. good i want to sit there and watch it like anybody else you mm -hmm. know yeah when you're when you're coming up and you've already found your voice you found your cadence you found your ti timing how do you go and watch other comics that are making it and doing well that have similar humor to you and not take their shit because it seems like a very difficult job to not you know, snipe someone's joke and change it up a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah, exactly. Like, you, you know? hear something, you're like, God man, that damn. was solid. I, I feel like... And the thing that comes to my mind is, in there. like, growing up, like, when I was, you know, 
getting like turning like 12, 13, like Dane Cook was big. And I, I love Dane Cook. I thought it was awesome. But then as you get older, more media, more podcasts come out. People are kind of hating on Dane Cook. I'm not asking you to do that. But people are saying Dane Cook stole from Louis C.K. with the rolling of the R's and all this different stuff. Like, how do you not take that stuff? Was that ever a struggle for you? No. I mean, I think that there's just such a an established thing where it's usually when you see somebody who's like, you, you hear a great joke, you just go, fuck. That, like, God damn, I wish I would have thought of that. Right. But- it's like he did it. Mm -hmm. Like you, when you see it, you're just like, that's done now, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so it, it never occurs to you to go like, how can I make that mine? You kind of just go like, I need to fucking write more. I need to come up with some shit. But um, yeah, no, the, and which like, look, the, the, the real thing is that that's why I think so many of us, myself included, lean so hard into talking about our lives because there's no like, you can't. It's uniquely yours. It's, exactly. If I talk to you about like my wife, my kids, my dad, my travels, like, you know, my experiences, there is no chance that I'm talking about what you're talking about. Like mm -hmm. it's so uniquely mine. So that's, I think that's something that has really evolved in stand up is like people have really, a lot, not everybody, but a lot of people just re really lean into talking about their personal experiences. Because there's no, you're not going to cross contaminate anything. Mm -hmm. But I fucking, I mean, yeah, I watch jokes where I'm like, that was so fucking good. And I, my thought really is like, I wish I would have thought of that. Fuck yeah. you, you piece of shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It would almost suck. Like I feel like, I feel like it almost suck. Like you're doing your own thing. You don't really watch a whole lot. And then one of your jokes is similar to somebody else. Now like, I have oh. had people like, oh, you kind of. And then you're just thinking. I, I would assume that you're just thinking like, well, fuck, I didn't, I didn't know. Like yeah, I just. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what I have said uh, a few times. I've seen somebody do a bit that something similar to what I'm doing and I'm in the room and I always tell them in that moment, like, Hey, just so you know, I have a bit very similar to what you're saying right now. Cause mm -hmm. it's something that's not out. Like if it's out, then I'm just, I'll, I'll be like, Oh, they're, they're doing something similar to something I have out. Yeah. So they're going to look like they're doing my bit. Mm -hmm. Your but fans it, will let them. Oh know. yeah, like yeah, <laughs> yeah. and the people they will go and, fucking. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And people will. T I mean, I've, I've had people tell me they're like, "You're that bit is similar to so and so's," and I'll be, I'll look, and either they're not similar, and you're like, "That's not even remotely close." There's just like, we both have a bit about hats, and you're like, "You stole his bit." I'm like, "What are you talking about?" Like, <laughs> yeah. we're both allowed to talk about hats, <laughs> right? You know, but I've also told people like, I've seen something similar, and then I go, I look at when they came out. And if my shit came out first, I'm not even accusing the other person of taking it. I'm just like, hey, just so you know, mine came out a year before. And then that person like shuts down. Yeah. Um, but I've told people because you want to tell, you want to tell somebody so that they don't think, like if somebody is up there and they do their fucking hat bit and you're like, I'm doing a bit right now. You want to tell them if they see you because you want them to go, hey, I didn't come up with that after I saw you that day at the club. I've, I'm doing it right. That's why I tell them in the moment, right? Mm -hmm. That hap But that happens, that's a normal thing to happen where you go, we're both talking about fucking ice or whatever, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just, let, just letting you know that I am also exploring what it is to have sub-freezing water in my yeah. glass. So. <laughs> yeah. When you have a, uh, like a platform as big as you do, like you and Bert with two bears, uh, Two Bears, One Cave, and just all the, you kind of have like a network and as big as your brand is, what is the benefit? And if it's as simple as finances, um, then I guess that's what the answer would be. But what is the benefit of being on like a Netflix or a streaming platform versus you just doing your own thing because you have such a big audience yourself? No, it's a, it's actually a good question. I mean, everything has changed. I mean, one of the things that is like obvious is that you can have great success with posting a special on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Like YouTube people were like seeing as like for a minute, like, oh, things didn't work out for you. Right. <laughs> you had to put it on YouTube. And then you see what's happened with specials on YouTube that when they hit, they fucking explode. I mean, Shane's. Shane. Dude, that stand up in Austin has got to be one of my top five. It's one of my top five. It is so fucking funny. When I, I just told, I saw him yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, and I was, I mean, I've told him this before that, when I first was, you know, I'd heard about him and I saw a clip and I was like, it's funny. And then his special came out, it first came out. I, I was sent the, 
you know, whatever the, the, the link, I, I click on it and I realize that like 15, 20 minutes have gone by and I'm like, and the reason that like, I'm like surprised is like normally like I tap out fast. Mm -hmm. Like I'll watch stand up for like three minutes and like turn it off, you know, a special. And then I'm like checking again. I'm like, I'm about to finish this thing. It's like at whatever, 50 minutes or something. And I turn it off and I was like, that is the most engaged and hardest I've laughed at a special in a long, like in a while. Mm -hmm. And it was a YouTube special that like he was, it's so good. Like it, it, it's also like, it is my wheelhouse of what I find funny. Like, he, like he, you know what I mean? Like there's yeah. genres of things that people like it, it, it. No question. It really hit me in my, in my spot where I was like, this is so fucking funny. And yeah, I mean, I, I love that special. I, I think it's one of the best specials of the last five years. Yeah. Yeah. The Alabama yeah. football, the Fox News, dad, all, oh, it's just all of it. The dude. dad shit is probably what made me laugh the hardest. <laughs> yeah. Like when he's when he talks fucking about Mr. like fucking... when he's like <laughs> he, he's so drunk funny. and he wakes up to like what's going on in Israel, like the <laughs> bombing each other. Like that shit made me laugh. Whoa! So yeah, whoa! whoa. whoa. That shit dude. made me laugh. It's the little about the wall <laughs> the in the northeast. Like, uh, the thing that. It's so funny to me about Shane is what's so funny to me about you and your stand-up is like Shane can say so little and have such a presence and and just a little movement and the timing. Like when I watch Sledgehammer, you're literally having a conversation with your kid or with your dad and you like are just doing eight words in the span of 30 seconds. But the way you put the words and where you put them, it's fucking hilarious. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, it it's, it's the type of thing, yeah, that I, I mean... Little things, the nuance of things is what makes me laugh the hardest. More yeah. so than like the, 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 like, you know, the big punchline is always something you want, but like it's the little stuff that makes me remember and, and love stuff. Yeah. You know, like the little facial expressions, the pause being in the right place. Like, that's what you work on too, you know? The callbacks like, that happen. The callbacks. All callbacks are always a fun little treat. Yeah. So I feel fun. like that's a lot of your fans, like watching it too, you just see the, uh, the reaction by a lot of your fans, like when you do hit the callbacks throughout the entirety of, yeah. the, of the special and everyone's just clapping because uh, it's funny, but it's also like, man, like well done. Like that yeah. would have to feel, that would have to feel so sick. Yeah, you just, want to like, you don't want them to be too like, you know, for lack of a better, like too, you want to weave them in a clever way. Cause then they're kind of like, oh, like there it is. Yeah. As opposed to just like dropping it whenever. So like, like making a callback feel organic. So it's like, it's in a bit 10 minutes later, but it is, a, you know, it's a callback to something, but it's, it, it feels natural in the newer bit or in the later bit. That's like a fun thing. I think to. It's so like an that, appreciation clap that's happening. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 It's fun. By the way, I have to mention because, because I did see Shane yesterday that he was like, we, if you can watch, the, it came out today. I was like, uh, "How was uh, how was the what, beer Olympics?" Yeah. He goes, "You dodged a bullet." <laughs> <laughs> he goes, "It sucked." No, he's lying. <laughs> yeah, he did, he's he did. lying. And I was like, "Shut up." He go, and then what we got into was, <laughs> first of all, yes, he did show me bruise. He's like, "This is a week old bruise, it's still yellow." Yeah. And I was like, "Here's what it is: You hang out with these guys, and you're like, this is fucking, they're just good guys, like the regular guys." I go, but. When you take take these fucking assholes, these uh, these pro athletes, and you just go, we're competing. <laughs> I go, this switch happens that you for, you forget that they're monsters, like they're actual literal <laughs> monsters. He's like, dude, I had a guy grab me by my neck and hold me. He goes, I thought we were playing. I thought we were like fucking around. And then, Is this you? That's me. <laughs> and then, talking about me. Yeah. And then he, oh, he yeah, keep yeah, talking. Man. I'll show it to you. He goes, I got beat the fuck, up. and I was drunk, so I didn't know. What was happening to me yeah. until the next day, and he was like, "It hurts so bad." Dude, this is why Shane's such a bitch. Okay, tell me, tell me, because <laughs> that whole wrestling—that's me and oh, Shane. Yeah. <laughs> that's a fucking. Yeah, he looks like he's suffering right there. That yeah, doesn't look yeah. like. There's Someone one made a meme out of that. Taylor has him like that, like yeah. in the point he's dragging Someone him. Someone put him. <laughs> Shane's <laughs> tapping like three or four times, and Taylor's just dragging yeah. him throughout the pool. So you can just tell he's in an absolute the shoving. I, he goes, yeah, he goes, Taylor's a professional shover. Yeah. <laughs> he's Dude, shoving me. He fucking, so here's how it started. We were in my man cave and we we're kind of fucking around because I, I do, I think Shane's hilarious and I love being around him, especially when he's got a couple drinks in him and he, his, he kind of comes out of a shell a little bit yeah. and he starts, you know, well, what are you going to do, pussy? What are you going to do? And he starts fucking naked it on. Sure. So we end up he's on the great, couch. There's a photo of us on the couch. And I'm like full mounted on him. Yeah. And I'm like holding him and he's like, he's choking, but like, you're a bitch. Like still egging it on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then sure, like 
Will gets in a fight with this guy, the lead singer of Midland, throws him in the pool, starts wrestling him, and then JP's like, hey, get Shane in the pool. So I like, you know, Shane, he didn't want to take that shirt off for nobody. Yeah. <laughs> we got to get him in this fucking pool. So I body toss him in there, and you can see in this video, he's like, you don't want this. And he kind of takes his shirt off, and we start going. But he instigated... 95% of that shit. He, him and Bert would lose in a competition. And then Shane would find me and Will and come up behind us and be like, you're being nasty. You're being a bad host, man. You're such a bad host. Well, I'm like he was trying saying, to shoot a beer pong ball. And I'm like, dude, I'm going to fucking end this he guy. Said, who was it? He said an NHL player. Ja, James. He goes, he goes, this dude <laughs> legit hurt me. Mm. And then came back and was like, my bad on that. Yeah. <laughs> he said, he and, fucking... Dude, those hockey players, they look like sticks. They are strong and sturdy individuals. Yeah. They're playing, like, that's after all the competition is over. It's like, and they fucking fight. Like, they legit yeah. fight. Oh, yeah. And they can booze, too. Yeah. They can put it down. And they get and start playing pool basketball. And I looked over for a minute. <laughs> I could have sworn three people were drowning at one point. It was just, it's elbows are being thrown. Dudes are getting thrown everywhere. It was as fratty and as energetic as it possibly can get. Yeah. You got, you got to watch Shane talk about it. <laughs> you yeah, said it's, it's out today. It's uh, out today. Two bears. No, no, it's uh, it's his. I came because I did it. Here. Oh, you went out to uh, oh, yeah, dude. I went to, I went to Queens. Yeah. How wild is his spot? <laughs> yeah, I was good. out there. What was that? A month ago. Yeah. He's like, Hey, you want to come do the pod? I was like, hell yeah, dude. And then I call him and I get there. I'm like, Hey, am I in the right spot? And then we come in. I'm like, he, yeah, why are you living like this, man? <laughs> he's like, is how you make comedy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like, how you make comedy. <laughs> and then I go up. He it's lives. Like, well, he lives like a like a hoarder, right? Yeah. Like he lives he, like, just, he lives like he's like a college student. They you go upstairs and all the boys are just sitting there playing UFC yeah. like video games. It's such a departure from my life. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> I live like a fucking baller, and, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? Dude, yeah, but he's it's uh, funny, man. Yeah, it's a choice. <laughs> yeah, it is a choice. Yeah. All right, boys, we, we, uh, <clears throat> we interrupt this episode to bring you a message from- Hang on, hang on, hang on, I got an idea. God damn, this shit is good. You, Twisted Tea is a refreshing hard iced tea made with real brewed tea at 5% alcohol. It tastes like real iced tea because it's made with real brewed tea. Real brewed tea with a kick. That's 5% ABB. Full of flavor and very refreshing. Goes down smooth with no carbonation, which makes it easy to drink all day long. Twisted Tea fuels fun and celebrates extreme fandom on game day. Twisted Tea is the perfect alcohol beverage for game day, whether tailgating in a parking lot, watching it, watching at the bar, watching with friends at home, or watching with friends at home. Twisted Tea is there to turn up your game day. Keep it twisted. Grab a refreshing Twisted Tea today. And now, back to this episode. He does a lot of sketch comedy. Why didn't you, was there ever a point when you were talking about doing communications and making videos and like doing all that? Did you ever want to do like Mad TV definitely. or SNL? Definitely. I mean, I literally thought that when I was at that Groundling, the Groundlings, if you, if you look it up, it's like, it's the West Coast improv school that so many people you know mm -hmm. would go to. It's like Second City, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. It's the LA version of that. And it's, uh, I mean, Will Ferrell came from there, Fallon, all like... All, endless people. So when I found that out, I was like, oh, that's where I'll go. Mm -hmm. And then I'll do SNL. Like, I literally thought that was the way to do it. And then they have tier, like they have, it's a school. So like there's entry, like level one, level two, like, like that. Then there's this thing called Writer's Lab. Then there's Sunday Company. And then there's the Groundlings, right? So it's a whole thing. Mm -hmm. When you get to Writing Lab, if uh, they call you, it means that you've like, you at least have some chops. You, like if you were, if you suck, they're not, they don't call you for that. And they go, well, they call you and it's to like, you know, start working on the writing aspect of it. If you can pass on it, you can go like, I can't do it right now. And they'll call you a second time. But if you pass a second time, they'd never call you again. That's really? the policy. And so the first time they called me, I had a legit, I can't do it right now. I don't remember what it was. But the second time they called me, it was, I realized, I, had, I started doing stand-up. And I remember I'd, I mean, you know, I got 50 bucks to do it here, $100 to do it there. And I was like, I think this is the path I need. Like, I felt like if I go do that, it's going to be a distraction from stand-up. Like, it's, it's, I'm spread out in a way that I, I can't register. So I said no. 
but I still liked doing sketch stuff. Like I, you know, I've filmed sketches over the years and posted them and I've acted in a few things. I have like a couple of things that are like legit. Like I have a thing with Bert that we're going to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a, another movie in development at a, at a, at a place. And then I, I filmed like my own version of like, I filmed the pilot last year that I paid for. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And I sold it. So like, we're going to, go make the series. So, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. So it's, it, and that's like, I wrote it. I'm in it. I produced it. Spent fucking so much money to make it look, I just didn't want it to look like, like a sketch show. Mm-hmm. Cause a lot of them look so low production. So we don't like, we actually call them shorts. Like, you know, like it's like, if you ever watch black mirror, mm-hmm. like though an episode of that will have like, you know, it's like a short film. And that's how we tried to make this series, like short films. Any idea when that's going to come out? Well, um, it'd be cool if the strike was resolved. So that, that we is could true. actually- You probably- uh, Get, I mean, I want, it, I want them to get what they need, obviously, and what they right. want. Um, but my guess would be that it would be late next year when we would be able to put that out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, uh, I know when we had Bert on, and we're kind of like asking about your guys' dynamic and everything else. And he alludes to you being like the brains behind the operation. Like over the years, obviously, you know, humble cat. But um, how do you learn to, how have you learned how to build all of these things out over time? Like, do you have a, uh, like a knack or an interest? Like when you're building out, like you have a media network, you have all these things going on, like balancing all that and learning about all that, because it does seem like you are a very savvy behind the microphone or, you know, behind the camera and everything else? No, I think it's like, um, you know, I, I'm, an, I'm an observer and I, I, I try to like learn from what other people are doing too. So I do a lot of that. Like I do a lot of like seeing what works for other people and then following instincts and like, you know, not being, um, not being resistant to like the new, whatever's something, something is like coming about like, you know, Hey, uh, whatever, it could be like TikTok is where everyone's going and not being like, ah, I'm not going to do that. You know, that's not for me. Like just being open to the <clears> fact <throat> that that you can't, you can't just go, I do it this way. This is what we do. Like being open to those ideas and, and trying things. Like I, I'm, I'm, I think if you're a comic, you're a natural entrepreneur, like you man it, you own your business. And that means that you're not totally risk averse. Like you're going to take risks. And so like we take, risks in things like when we do these uh we do these live streaming shows like to produce them you have to spend money you have to like go ahead and put together a different type of show like it's like it's like almost like a a variety show like we're gonna have music we're gonna have this it's a risk Mm -hmm. and then you go i'm gonna i'm gonna do ten dollar like it was a big thing was like people were like trying to like really have us agents are like you should charge more you know i was like no let's just try to do volume like let's just try to do volume and see if we can do a lot of tickets but make it affordable 10 bucks is like pretty affordable ticket and so i I, i'm open to like trying things and i go if this doesn't like when i shot the pilot i spent over a million dollars to shoot it so you go like and then people like what if you lose money i'm like then it didn't work out Mm -hmm. (laughs) but like the upside is maybe it's exactly what I wanted to make. And even if I don't make money on it, I have this thing I wanted to make. And so I can't, you don't make, I don't make just decisions based on, is this going to be financially beneficial? Obviously you want to make money, but like you have to do things that are like fulfilling creatively. And to me, there's like something about in this era that we're in right now, the, I like the adventure of trying something and seeing how it, like how, where it ends up. Even if that's like trying it, like, we develop new podcasts and I'm like, you don't know how these are going to, like podcasts, you know what I mean, you guys do it. It's yeah. like, you go, well, let's get together, do this pot, do fucking 500 of my pe- people might listen to it and it's considered a, a bomb. Mm-hmm. Um, and there is no such thing as like, if you do put the, like there's been celebrities that have gotten together to do podcasts that fail, like legit huge names. So I get excited about trying new things. It's just like when you get on stage, you try things that's what feels good to like try a joke mm-hmm. and have the potential for it to bomb. <laughs> like if there's no potential for it to bomb, it's not as 
as rewarding internally as, you know what I mean? Like a, a safe joke, right? Kind of like where you're like, oh, this will get a laugh. Just a little softball pitch. Yeah, those are like, it feels good to get the laugh. But part of you goes like, oh, if you would have tried something else that was like riskier, that feels more fun. Mm -hmm. And I think that applies to like all the stuff you're saying. Like all those things is like, you want to take a risk. You want it to be a calculated risk. But there's no, there's no thrill in just like playing everything safe. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Was there ever a fear when you were, when you had kids about taking more risk? There was a fear in not working enough. Mm -hmm. So, which is a different thing than most people say, right? Yeah. A lot of people are like, I, I got to make when, sure I spend more time with my kids. When she was pregnant uh, and I was like, we're having a baby. I, I definitely hit a switch where I just went like into, I need to work mm -hmm. a lot. And I went, I went hard and it was at, out at, of the idea of like providing. Yeah, because I was like, I mean, up until that point, it was the two of us. Like, you realize that, like, if it's just the two of you, you can fucking get by. Mm -hmm. We'll go to Trader Joe's and get some frozen fucking burritos. And, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you eat, you have dinner, you don't shows. have dinner. It really doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. It's like, if, I, if, you, if you don't, if you're not making a lot, you're like, well, we, you know, hopefully we'll, I'll get another gig next week and I'll have enough for rent. Mm -hmm. Like, shit like that. Yeah. You know, you're like, I mean, I always wanted to work, but like when, when a kid comes, yeah, I was like, it wasn't even, I didn't even have to like externally say it. It was like, it was so internal of like, it's like you, it's like the modern version of like hunter gatherer mode where you're just like, I have to provide. Mm -hmm. So that, I mean, I went into like six gear with like working. Yeah. Yeah. Seems like you have an incredible work ethic. When you look at you and Bert. Yeah. Who would you say has the better work ethic? Well, Bert would be like, I mean, I'm doing a lot more actually right now. I'm doing the festival. <laughs> I'm doing the, the festival is fucking crazy. <laughs> uh, no, I think we both, you know, I think we both have dad or ha I had a dad who like we were like very traditional work, you know, get up at 530, mm -hmm. whatever, go to work. Like they're just like old school Americana dads who are like, yeah, of course you work. Right. So then like yeah. when opportunities come, <clears throat> like they have arrived for us now, we're mm -hmm. like, we have opportunities. Like, I mean, n neither one of us is like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like we're just like, oh yeah, you go to work. Yeah. And so yeah, we both work a lot. I mean, I've like, I did a tour that I think was insane. When I look back on like, it was, it was too much. Meaning I'm not like I couldn't handle it. It's just like for like, for having a family, it's just like, it's not conducive to do that many shows and mm -hmm. try to tour that much so i'm more conscious of it and like i'm literally gonna see my agent here uh to plan out the next like you ha we have to have more weeks off mm -hmm. you know um but it's not because like i don't want to work it's like I, I have to be able to be home like i have little kids man yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know? so i mean bert is going in my opinion too hard like he, he went, goes and he, I like it's insane. Yeah, I think it's almost like avoiding life. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like I'm like, what are you doing? And then he, because like Bert does this thing where he, uh, he knows I'm when I say this that he'll be like, yeah, I just, I don't know, I just, I don't know, I just took it on, took on too much. I'm like, yeah, but you're in control. Like you can say it. And he's like, I don't know, like I don't know. He has a hard time saying no. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely has. He does time. give himself to a lot of different, to as yeah. much as he can. I mean, yeah. even coming to Beer Olympics when I hit him That's up crazy. the next day and was like, hey, man, I, you know, I know you get pulled in a lot of different angles and you're just blowing up. He has been for a while now. And it's like, oh, I appreciate you just like taking the time. And because you could even see it at the Beer Olympics. I don't know about you, but you when could he see up. a little bit of a, you could just see like he was worn down a little bit. And then he expressed that when he sent the message back. He's like, hey, you know, I was running a little low, but. Very appreciative. You know Bird. Like of course. He's, he's the best. No, he's the best. It yeah, does I, seem like he just goes fucking no, I want him miles an hour. To, I mean, if he's, if he's trying, look, if he wants to hear this, okay, you're working harder. <laughs> like, I, don't, <laughs> like, I don't know. He did ask but, me to ask that question. Yeah, no, he, he, I mean, yeah, but I, you know, I, we did a Zoom call for this thing the other day and we get on. He's like, Ugh. I'm like, are you all right? He's like, I'm dying. I was like, yeah, I don't want that to be real. Like, could you? chill the fuck out for a second 
But yeah, he goes, you know, he'll do this. I think he's going to take some a little bit of time. At, then he's got his fully loaded crews. Then he goes back on tour, then into another production. Yeah, it's like, I don't know, man. I get it because you go, these are, these are incredible opportunities. You work your whole career for these opportunities. Mm -hmm. And then you get them, but you still have to, like, I'm, look, I'm saying it like I'm telling him, I'm telling myself too. You still have to like figure out how to manage it. Yeah. Cause you, you don't, I guess you don't want to be like, no thanks, right? To the thing that you're like, you always wanted to do, but you can't say yes to all of it. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's the part you have to figure out. You can't say yes to all of it. Oh, what time? Oh, fuck them. I'll give us know. um, give us three pet peeves of Burt Kreischer. Three of his pet peeves. Three pet peeves you have with him. Oh, that I have with him. Mm -hmm. No, like that you see of him. Three pet peeves you have for Burt. Like what bugs you about Burt? Okay. Three things. Oh, pretty easy. Um, number one would be as busy as he is, mm -hmm. just not responding to, tech. like, I'm like, hey man, we're good friends. We're literal business partners. And I've called you and texted you for four days. Oh my bad. I'm like, yeah, no. Yeah. Like I've been around you when other people, and I, I see how you, mm. I'm like, don't fucking yeah. answer me. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> so that would that fucking irritates the shit out of me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm like, whatever, dude. I I know what I know how you do this. Like, pick up the fucking phone. Text me back that you can't talk. Simple enough. That's, so that makes me crazy. Um, what else makes me crazy about him? He uh, he will. Oh yeah, he just won't like consider anybody else's emotions in the room. <laughs> so like he'll come in and I'll be like, and he's like yelling at, you know, somebody on the staff and I'm like, buddy, buddy. And he's like, what? I go, yeah, but he feels this way. But I'll give, I'll give him credit. When you point that stuff out to him, he'll be like, you're right, you're right, you're right. Um, Nadav. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't think about how you might have felt in this. <laughs> you know? It's literally like you're raising kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you're a dad and you're just like, yeah, but your brother feels this way. Yeah. And then he's like, okay, good point, point. Sometimes I get a little ahead. Of so yeah, I do give him credit. He gets very, he gets like, he gets so fucking like fired up in the moments of like fun. Because his whole thing is like, how can I make something more, like he wants every moment to be, like if he came in here, He's like, let's make this the best podcast in the history of podcast. Like, yeah, right. Like he wants to, he wants to manufacture fun, even if it's like, you know, I'm like, it can't. Uh, he doesn't want to have like an okay day. Mm -hmm. Every time you go, like, how was last night's thing? It was the best night in my life, and I go, I know it wasn't. And he's like, what? I go, well, if it was the best night, like you've said, it's been the best night of your life five hundred times. So. Which one is it? Like most people have an epic experience. You, I go, you had dinner. You told me it was the best dinner you've ever had in your life. You had the best coffee you ever had in your life this morning. The show was the best night. He goes, okay, all right, all right. sometimes I embellish. And I'm like, yeah, I, <laughs> quite a bit. So, Dude, your bird voice is so it's, funny. It's like he, but you know what I mean? Like he really, and I, I actually, it's, a lot of that is tied to the, to like booze. And like, you know, he's the party guy. Cause like the party guy wants the party to go on, right? Like one time we hung out. I mean, I'm not a big drinker and we had a couple of drinks and I was like, you know, it was, it was like midnight. We were at this hotel. I was like, all right, like I'm going to go to bed. He goes, what? I go, I want to go to bed. He goes, why? I go, cause it's fucking midnight and I've had a few drinks and I'm tired. He's like, don't you want this feeling to keep going? Like, <laughs> what? what feeling? He's like, just like the, the buzz. Like, don't you want it to just not stop? And I was like, no, <laughs> I want to put my head on a fucking pillow <laughs> yeah. and sleep. Like, are you crazy? And he's like, I just want this to never end. I was like, that's not a healthy thought. <laughs> like, it's fucking, this shit will never end. But then he actually, he's not lying about that. Like, that is, 
know what I mean? Like, yeah. And so like it has two sides because the upside is that he makes most things more fun. Mm -hmm. like he just you know, he comes in and you're like, oh shit, like a party just came into the room. <laughs> like he's a literal party. Now, by the way, he's in the last year since he's like really like, I don't know, exploded in popularity or whatever. Every time I see him, there's like eight people with him. I'm like, who the fuck are all these people? He yeah. has an entourage now. Like he's like, this is my camera guy. This is my sound guy. I'm like, what? He never like, just rolls in solo anymore. That's but it's wild. Like, it's a party. It's a party where he goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then he, they keep the party going. Seems exhausting. But also, be on the receiving end of it. Every time Bert walks into a room, you're like, fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, I'm exactly. so happy he's here because he's such a good time. And the thing about Bert is when you see him and you talk to him, a minute, two minutes, you literally walk away going, I feel like we're best friends. He a made me feel percent. like... Man, when we're, we're, the we're movie friends premiere, for life. I'm like, oh, I think we passed Tom as his yeah, yeah. best friend. No, he does. Well, yeah. he's very. Here's the thing. He's very sincere. He's very sincere, and he doesn't do like he doesn't do like uh, yeah, like good to see you, man. Like he's not, he's not like that. He's a he's like a look into your eyes, and like this means so much to me. He likes community. He you know he's he is a frat guy. Mm -hmm. Frat guy has like a negative connotation. The positive of it is like if you wanted to find the positive in that is somebody who like wants like a friendship fraternity to exist. Mm -hmm. So like he goes, let's all, why don't we all just be friends and like hang out and like, let's yeah. make this fun. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> like, I want to go be alone. Yeah. Like, and he's like, no, come on. And like he's always like, come join us. And mm -hmm. like, you know, like that's. As an observer, it's a, you guys have a very interesting dynamic. You guys are both hilarious individuals in yeah. your own way, but it's. Interesting to see how, I mean, I'm assuming you guys are best friends. Would you call him your best friend? Yeah, we're, we're, we're yes, we're, we're best friends. And he's like, it, you know, it is a, it is a balance. Like, um, part of the reason I think that it works for us is that I thoroughly enjoy him. Mm -hmm. Like, like a lot of people were like, how do you put up with this fucking lunatic? And I'm like, yeah, but I enjoy, like he entertains the shit out of me. Mm -hmm. I find him very, one of the first times we ever took a road trip together. It was like years ago. And we drove up to Sacramento and we're driving back down from LA. I mean, it's like hours drive. I forget how many hours it is. And then on the way back from Sacramento, he goes, you know, you don't say much. And I was like, you haven't shut the fuck up. You haven't stopped talking. And he goes, yeah, that checks out. I was yeah, like, yeah, that checks out. But the thing is, I was like, yeah, but I'm, I go, I just literally, I would ask him a question. He would talk for 30 minutes straight. Mm -hmm. And then I ask him one more question. An hour has gone by with him just, <laughs> Talk, I mean, he's just talk, talk, talk. But I enjoy him. Like, I enjoy his his company. And then he thinks that I'm fucking weird. And I'm like, I, I don't think I'm weird. I think I'm pretty much like the voice of reason and you're fucking crazy. Yeah. But I enjoy your craziness. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know we got to let you go because people are, he's getting texts, people are opening the door. All right. But Sledgehammer. Sledgehammer. Of, of all the specials you've done, what makes you so proud of this special? I mean, look, I don't know if this is something that will always happen. Like for me, it's like so clearly for me, the, like my, what I'm most proud of. I toured for, usually I was on a two year turnaround, right? And I thought, I was felt fine about that. Like meaning like I would shoot a special, start working on something new. Two years would go by and I'd shoot another one and put it out. And pandemic contributed to this, but it was three years. And I, I just felt like it got, it's so much better. It's so much tighter. I became a better performer. Like I just, I like the special so much more. And, you know, I just felt like it's a more, like you always want to get better in stand, you know? So you, you just like, it feels like, like whatever, you know, evolved. Like I've evolved as a person, as a comic, um, it, it's like, it's more personal to me because like my dad died during it and we were very close and I talk about it even though I make jokes about it, obviously. But so like, it's stuff that is like, you know, it's more emotional for me as much as it's not like an emotional thing to watch. It's like all that to me was like, and it's a huge tour. Like I, the culmination of a, of a 21 month tour is this special. So to me, it's like, as uh, you know, it was the most fun I've ever had shooting a special, like by far. And I don't know, man. I'm just like, it's been out for a couple of days. 
It's number one on Netflix. It's the number one. Yeah, it's got. It's it's got yeah, that's pretty cool. It's got a good feeling. Um, I said, we we see your Instagram. No, no, Post but I mean, like, it. there was like an article today <laughs> of uh, like how it dethroned uh, that Henry Cavill show, The Witch or whatever. So the Witcher. Like, the yeah. Witcher. You know, I did see that. You know where I saw that? Where on my your, Instagram? On your Instagram? Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, they it, said. Which, it. And I mean, it's they said it to as me. Fuck. I was like, I was like, yeah, dude. The, the, they're like, do you want to post this? I was like, yeah, hundred percent, of course. Throw that shit up there multiple times. And the guy yeah. was so sassy. Post it twice in yeah. one day. The, yeah. guy, the guy was so sassy who, who mm. wrote it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He was like, apparently, this guy has five specials. <laughs> like, he wrote apparently. Yeah. Like it's not. You can just like you can't find it. Like, it like I don't even know how to find, find a verify this but apparently this guy has five specials on netflix and apparently people are watching it and I'm like all right man that shit to me is fun but it's honestly it's not even about it's not about that it's about that like i feel like when you do a special you it's like when you're you're you've been in a kitchen you know what i mean like you've been making something and you Cooking go something up. yeah and you are ex you are excited I, I don't believe anybody that isn't excited for people to like try it right yeah and yes yeah, some people go this tastes like shit <laughs> but, yeah. but a lot of people enjoy it and then you go well that feels good mm -hmm. yeah yeah man thank you this has yeah. been an honor bro no i'm like, super legit, this yeah. has been I'm, awesome. I'm sorry i couldn't make it to what would have been a horrific experience at the uh you're coming next, next year, year. Next, you're coming you're next year so, you don't you'd be a ref okay. you could be a ref next year you don't know next year i might be fucking jacked fuck you guys up dude, dude i we didn't get to talk about it but you've you look really good you've lost bro, a lot of weight we're gonna get killed we're gonna get i know i know hey he's got the uh what's it called the short head he's got a short head bicep Short heads, short heads play. So if we play ball, dude, yeah. you need the short heads. Yeah. Long heads take longer to develop. Short they don't look as peak. good. No, that's what I'm talking about. You, you got a good peak. Got a good physique. You guys, you guys, come on. Man. You healed up nicely since your basketball incident. Thanks, brother. Thanks. I'll see you in the pool next year. No bro. question. Right, man. You will be more injured. Hey, okay. have a great day. Big hugs, tiny kisses. <laughs> dude, awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks so much, man.